Plus Two Poker Cast, presented by RunItOnce.com. I'm your host, A. Schwartz, alongside, uh, let's do it this way, Roscoe P. Coltrane. China! And Mr. Terrence Chan, uh, welcome to uh, another week, guys. Hi, nice to be on the show again. <laughs> Hi, nice to be on your show again. Uh, this is PokerCast 431. September 27th, 2016. Uh, lots to get to today. Uh, tons of mail, tons of stuff to talk about. Some hands from your uh, World Championship of Online Poker main event tee you decided to play. Yeah. Um, we'll get to that in a sec. Well, why don't we quickly talk about the... You were wondering uh, on Twitter if you were plus EV in this event and, and thinking out loud kind of and, and sort of trying to get some feedback, I guess, on what other people thought about the relative quality of the main event of the players involved. Sure, yeah. I mean, I, you know, I, I don't play... Most people know I don't play a ton of online poker these days. Uh, mostly uh, one of those live players. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, it's been a while since I, I played a lot. I mean, I played about seven or eight events in the scoop. I felt really good. I felt really confident about the way that goes, but I didn't play any huge buy-in tournaments. Um, and so, you know, I'm thinking $5,000 W Coop. Uh, I mean, I, obviously there are people in there on $3 spinning goes. There are people in there, you know, just there's, you know, hundreds of seats given away every day, well, not given away, but, you know, awarded on stars every day. So I was just kind of wondering, like, what's the state of the game? I don't know what's going on. And uh, so, you know, I put that out there. Jay Carver, you know, gave me a vote of confidence. I don't know how much he was serious, how much he was joking, <laughs> but he said, you're, 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 you're fucking D Chan or whatever. Of course, you're your favorite. Um, JC Alvarado saw my tweet. He uh, sent me a uh, a message online and saying, hey, are you playing? If you are and you're not sure, I'll buy 20%. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. And so I said, well, okay. I mean, that's a pretty big vote of confidence for a guy who's in there grinding. JC grinds day in and day so out. So he knows exactly you, you know, what this He's, he's, he's a like. high-stakes player who goes to the EPT, plays high rollers, yeah. and he knows what the composition w Coop field is. And so uh, when he said that, he's like, you know, yeah, you're 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 a pretty big favorite. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm glad I played it. I, I fired both bullets and I, I busted out but I mean you know yeah I mean I think it was I think it was worth the play I think I'm a favorite in the field so well we've got some hands to talk about yeah, we'll uh, talk later about in the show hands, sure. uh, also uh, so I mean the World Series uh, sorry the World Series of Poker main event you know is always talked about as the super soft tournament people get their win their way in mm -hmm. if you're going to play one tournament as an MT tier all year make it the World Series of Poker right. main event it's the softest your ROI is the highest and uh, I'm wondering if this translates to for online poker to the world championship of online poker main event uh, it's sort of the closest thing to it right. right so it's it's sort of the closest thing obviously it doesn't have the luster i mean you know you tell people you're playing the world championship of online poker you know your your friends who don't your your aunt who doesn't play poker is isn't going to ask you if you're going to be on tv or anything like <laughs> right. that like uh it, it doesn't have that level but yeah it's it's the analog right so even though it's a five thousand dollar buy-in tournament it's not necessarily the five like any other five thousand dollar online tournament in in fact it's one of very few five thousand dollar online tournaments that happens out throughout the year so uh yeah i mean i think it's you know definitely considerably softer all the best players in the world are playing it but um also some not so good players well and you mentioned the spin and goes this is a format right. f uh tailored for the recreational player right. and now they have uh, a way or uh, i believe they were running satellites in the mm -hmm. spin and goes to the world championship online right. program i'm not sure exactly how, how many, many seats, how many people yeah. got in but um, clearly this could be sort of a game changer for the World Championship Online Poker main event when you're saddling so, satelliting so many casual players right. into this Right, it would thing. be interesting. I mean, I wonder if our boy uh, Brian Slick would have, would, would ha well, I'm sure he has the info, but what I'm he, sure he would he give, give it to it, us yeah. to, to let us know how many people are satellite qualifiers, how many people are spin and goes, how many people are direct qualifiers, you know, how many people got in Break for down. $27? How many people got in for $500, right? right? right. Like that, because that's a big difference if you're grinding $500 satellites or if you fluked your way in through some eleven dollar satellite by winning a bunch of you know a bunch of feeder satellites. Yeah. Um, all right. We'll, we'll we'll get onto that later. There's we'll some, talk some interesting w stuff that happened in the W Coop. We'll get to. Um, oh, we've been talking about some of the reviews. We've been asking people to go review bad or good. Yeah. Um, on uh, I iTunes saw for our show. I mean the, uh, the 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 average is, is fantastic. The average is really good. Yeah. Well, I mean uh, so but there's a few and uh, you know we've been reading the good ones. Why don't you, we you, read you one you of like the bad the ones? Yeah, you, you sent uh, Ross and I some haters <laughs> yesterday, mm -hmm. and uh, a couple of them are there's some funny sure. ones. There's sure. there's some good funny. Here's one I'll read. Uh, Poker player eighty five uh, from the USA. This is in December two thousand fifteen, so uh, eight months ago. The title is gone downhill. Uh, I used Ooh. to be an avid listener, but barely bother now. After MJ hung up this headset, the show has deteriorated markedly. Adam and Terrence, both knowledgeable poker players and well-connected in the industry, but seem to have little enthusiasm for the game, unlike Mike, who loved the game 
uh, whose love for the game was infectious. After a World Series of Poker, uh, which is like the Super Bowl in poker, neither host had bothered to watch much of the coverage and fumbled through trying to describe hands, uh, which were critical to the outcome. Too much of the show nowadays is about non-poker stuff, and they try to come up with gimmicky stuff like asking guests the same trivia questions week after week. And guess how many they're going to get right? Stir for trivia, right? This guy does not a fan of stir for trivia. Uh, One other problem with the podcast, whoever is the sponsorship with Poker Star as well. That's uh, no longer. But uh, yeah, so uh, guy who's got a little bit of a burr there. Yeah, he he might be an MJ fan. I think. I I think he's an MJ fan, and and hey, aren't we all? Yeah. I mean, here's the thing: is that he's right in a sense that MJ was a big fan of the game, uh, in the sense that he was a fan, like like in in the true sense, the way that. Uh, you know, we're Canucks fans or hockey fans yeah. or, or the average guy at home on a Sunday is a football fan. They weren't into it, right? So, like, you know, the, the, the demo, it's never going to be the same demographic of people who like MJ as opposed to who, who like us because, like we said, like this guy says, we're, we're in the industry. We've been playing poker for a combined, I think, between the two you're, of us. You're close, now. Close to 40 years. <laughs> well. and, and including Ross, uh, even more than that. Um <laughs> So yeah, I mean, th- well, it's it's not an, an issue. It's a different approach. Traded. Yeah, <laughs> it's a, it comes from a different perspective. When you and I are talking about issues in poker, uh, we play poker all the time. Right. We're, we're in the industry. We know these people. Right, uh, we know the they're, people. They're personally. not they're not people that you know we just see on TV. Uh, and you know, yeah, we don't cover who won the t- EPT Australia's event for in the in the five card draw. Um, don't care. Really don't. I mean, like our our. What I tried to make this show, or what we try to make this show about is, I think, a lot of discussion about what ha- what's happening in Poker World and what's relevant. I mean, the William Pasuf interview that we, we did just earlier this week or, or late last week was one, you know, we knew it at the time. It was going to be one of the most polarizing <laughs> yeah. interviews, and people jumped on the forum and gave it their their multiple cents worth. Right. And I, I think I, I enjoy that sort of discussion about this, uh, you know, a lot more than, you know, what might be the World Series coverage. I, 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 you know, you asked me before we went on the air, did I watch World Series coverage? And I'm like, nope, I had stuff to do this week. I'm going to be honest, it's not what I choose to do with my leisure time is, is watch World Series main event coverage. But I, you know, I follow the people in poker that, I follow a lot of really relevant people in poker and I know what's going on with the issues that I think affect poker players, but not necessarily poker fans. I think there are a lot of people actually like MJ in the world who are really important. I, I think of somebody like, I think of people like the old bluff crew, like like Lance Bradley and Jess Wellman and, and the people who are, are very much they like- love, They love to cover poker. They love to cover poker. Yeah, they, and they, not that we don't. Not, we, we, but they may not play nearly as much right. poker, right? And so- M- MJ would probably never have played the W Coop with Maine without satelliting in it a bunch of times because he was just not that guy. Yeah. Um, and he never felt Well, he played the main event. I mean, he's sort of a bad example to pick from a, from a casual well, poker fan. because he played the he's main he's event in the, in, the, in the years that everybody played the main <laughs> yeah, event. That's true, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, so, so but he's got some disposable income that maybe some of the other guys don't. Right, I guess that's, the, that's I think, the main point yeah. as an amateur of the game. Anyway, uh, yeah, so... Uh, I mean, though, I thought that was a fair criticism, right? Yeah, like, I think you, it was so here's too. one of the things, like, like we, got a, we got a bunch of one-star reviews that are just like, these guys fucking suck and they talk about nonsense yeah, or, yeah. or whatever. Blah, 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 like, blah. You're, you're always going to have you're always gonna have those, like, you know, one out of 50 or whatever it is. But, we're you know, I looked at the rating and, you know, we, we still the average is still five stars, which, you know, when, you know, since, you, since every one-star rating is going to drop the rating, like, you know, some amount a huge amount really yeah. if you have like a five star average like then th- that's just a gigantic yeah. effect that any one star rating has the fact that there's still a five star rating is really impressive and it's a credit for what you and MJ did for uh, 10 years because I've only been a part of this thing for two years um, so yeah I mean that's that's still something I think we should it's the of. two year mark isn't it Right yeah, now. it's uh, it was like ooh. September 2014. It, w- it, w- it was September. I looked it up. It was uh, the first week of September, so uh, I didn't get you anything for our anniversary. <laughs> um, What's that? The wood anniversary too? Yeah, yeah, is that it like might be linen tin. or something? Yeah, it might be. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a feather. <laughs> um, so yeah. yeah, happy anniversary. Good, good. Um, did you see? And I know. So Ross is the resident poker or er, uh, rap fan on the poker cast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, you you've done some freestyle rap, right? You're you've got some history with. You can uh, charge after the game. <laughs> with the format. Um, You've actually done freestyle rap? I did not. No, know I I did. I have a joke rap group that oh. we haven't made a song in a couple of years, but we did a New Year's show like a, a couple of years ago. Two years ago, yeah. Is this yeah. on the inner tubes? Can people YouTube this? Um, 
Does somebody has cell phone video, but I don't know if it's available online. It might be on someone's Facebook. But, ah. but you appreciate the we're genre. We're thinking about bringing it back. Oh, good. I'll, I'll <coughs> pimp out yeah, our new song. That's that'd be awesome. Let's do it. Uh, Prod Freeman, uh, who we threw Fury up on the, uh, the... The preeminent poker rapper. He okay. is the preeminent... Pr yeah. From the, the practice avoidance, of course, the old rap on the World Series of Poker main event coverage that was uh, not well received by the poker community. I uh. mean, people thought it was funny, and I don't think Prolod was going for funny. I believe it's called Poker is Fun for Everyone. Was poker that is the name? Fun, yeah. Was that the num name? Fun the for every. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, he's uh, now going by the name Progress, which is... Progress. Progress, progress. P R A. It's catchy. P R A G. Yeah. It's I don't know. Is it words. like like the whole rappers changing names things? Like how many names did Puff Daddy have? Kind of sort of one yeah. of those deals. <laughs> he, he's that. now he's now the the poker player formerly known as Spirit Rock. And he's he, gone. He's gone from Spirit Rock to he could be a symbol. Yeah. Soon. Prefontaine and whatever else other names. Oh yeah, was. Prefontaine. Right. Yeah, that's yeah. a long time ago. Um, he, uh, yeah, goes by the name Progress, and he has released, uh, along with uh, a, a co-singer, I'm not sure, Ali Aaliyah or something, uh, something like that. Um, anyway, he they released a song called Hazy Eyes, a uh, rap song on YouTube. Uh -huh. And I watched it. I, I thought it was markedly better than his past stuff. Well, obviously, he's trying harder now. It's, he's, yeah, I mean, I didn't... Older, it was so... Typically, rap song like an expensive car, a yeah. girl <laughs> with a like a, a walk showing her ass, walking away, uh -huh. smoking a joint, Many you know, times, yeah. sitting in a super expensive house so, overlooking. Like it so was just it, it, hip hop bingo. You filled your hip hop bingo card like you were able to. You oh fit yeah. everything. Yeah. You yeah. hit yeah. everything. Yeah, they fit the bill. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it was weird because it was kind of softer than a normal rap song. It was kind of almost like a ballad. It was kind of weird. What, anyway, I wanted you to get to give your feedback on Progress's new uh, rap song. What, what, what did you think? <laughs> Oh uh, well, uh, you you took a few words. I'm out sorry. Of they, had, they, they had the one walking away big booty shot. Yes, that, standard. That's, that's something in the, in probably ninety percent of rap videos. Uh, the house in Malibu overlooking. Was the it Malibu? Yeah, yeah. They had the shot from the balcony and from the driveway, and uh, and one thing I noticed is they were pimping the Tesla. They don't have like oh, a, a, a Tesla? Bentley or a nice <laughs> Mercedes out front. Oh, that's well, it's environmentally <laughs> friendly. Yeah, I it's mean, a statement, it's, really. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Prahlad was sporting the Canadian tuxedo for most of the video. <laughs> so was he really? <laughs> but it was like the acid wash Canadian yes. tuxedo. Oh, sweet. Yeah, but uh, it was it, it was probably directed by somebody who directs rap videos pretty often because it had the same feel of. It just missed like dollar bills flying all over the place. That would have well, been, wasn't like, that type of song, but. <laughs> Yeah, him and that girl were pretty close, I guess. Yeah, was, she, was it a Jewish big brody girl? No, <laughs> no, was she a Latina. Yeah, probably. I feel like um, she was Latina. I'm looking at at uh, Pralad Friedman's uh, Wikipedia page yeah. as we speak, and um, in the top right corner, you know, there's a the Wikipedia box that sort of says like it's the the sort of at a glance, right? So if it's like an athlete, it's like their height, yeah, or yeah. whatever. Uh, nicknames under Pralad Friedman is Spirit Rock, comma Progress, and then at the it's very updated, he probably updated it. Yeah, this is. Or can where you I'm update going. your own? I don't even know how can. Wikipedia works. You can you can edit, update anonymously. Okay. Um. So uh, yeah, a, a lot of by the way, like a lot of media people's jobs is keeping Wikipedia's up to date slash in a in a way that they want their celebrity to be presented. Oh, like a lot because like, if it's anonymous, people come in and and slag them off and say a bunch of stuff. And yep. Yeah. So so if if your job is sort of in the PR world for famous people, then this is a, that's a, a substantial big part of your work. Of your job. <laughs> uh, the very very last line of the Prahlad Friedman entry on September seventeenth, two thousand sixteen, Prahlad released his new track single "Hazy Eyes" with hip hop artist Ida Leal Magalhaes. Oh, there she is. So that's uh, her. Yes. So Prahlad is, or his, or his people have, have very recently edited. I'm a Prahlad fan. I I've always liked him. I know a lot of people have you issues. You want to put him in the upwaf. I put him in the upwaf. Uh, but a lot of people had issues with the uh, uh, ultimate ultimate bet thing. Right. Go, you know, whatever. I I mean, I get why people are upset about that. But uh, I, I I just like the guy. I I'm cheering for him all the time. Sure. Uh, You're not practicing avoidance. I'm not practicing avoidance <laughs> of his stuff. I, I'm not. He seems like a, a good guy. Not a big fan of his new music, but hopefully it leads to more stuff. Uh, my kid uh, min cashed the, the the hockey. He min cashed. He the min hockey. cashed hockey. He so, was the, so he made yeah. the team, and then and yeah. then what? What does that mean? So he made the team and let in six goals in his first. <laughs> no, <year? laughs> no, they haven't played yet. <laughs> uh, I think I mentioned it before there was so there's four uh, rep teams, the tra sort of the traveling teams. Um, so two goalies on each is eight goalies total. Right. Twelve tried out for the spots. Um, it so came down to. Yeah, he's in the eight hole. It came down to him and another kid for uh, 
for the eight hole, and he survived the cut. So he's uh, he's so he isn't min- he's so he's he isn't min cash. He's in the money. He's in the sorry. Cause well, uh, yeah, yeah, because he could still win the tournament. He can't go higher. I don't think he can go min- higher. Min cashed implied he busted, right? He's so pretty he much because he can't move up. Ah, okay. So I think enough. I think he's pretty much. He can't. He can't win the the Vezina Trophy <laughs> for cannot, whatever league he he's no. in. They're, they don't have one of those. No, right. that's not happening. Uh, well, it's good for him. Good, out of boy, Rudy. One quick uh, shout out to uh, regular listener Zach Resnick has. Uh, a, he's got a website called Just Hands Poker where they do a lot of coaching and teaching. Um, his site is doing something interesting. I thought we'd quickly talk about it. They're hosting a live coaching event in Akron, Ohio, November 12th and 13th, where players that sign up, I think it's $500 to sign up, uh, you get to play in a 2-5 no-limit hold'em game for four hours. Okay. Then you get, and it's there's RFID technology, it's, it's videotaped, oh, cool. and then you get a detailed review uh, of your play by the uh, Just Hands Poker coaches, and also Greg Raymer, who's, who's involved, is going to give a nice. long, detailed sort of analysis that's of what I mean, that's pretty all the hands. I thought it was an interesting format, right? Yeah, like that, and that's, that's pretty good value if you can get four hours of your hands analyzed by uh, quality coaches. I mean, that yeah. that comes out to $125 an hour, and you're and playing, you're playing a cash game. You're playing a cash game the whole time. I mean, yeah, it's a uh, That was neat. Event. So, if so check it out, justhandspoker.com. Yeah, if you're in the Akron area. Yeah, yeah, exactly. As we often are. <laughs> I'm always in Akron. Yeah. Uh, let's get on to some in case you missed the, it. Uh, the birthplace of AA. What was it? Akron, Ohio. So, uh, Bill Smith? No, Fred Smith. What's his name? B- Bill. Bill, Bill Smith. Bill, Bill Smith. I, I don't know. I'm yeah. not a good AA person. <laughs> All right. So once you're, what, if you're, because you're recover- coming, if you're recovering from the alcoholism and want to jump into the gambling, <laughs> then this is your, uh, this, then this your guy. Akron, I think Akron is the place to be. It was also like bu- it had like the most meth labs busted in a year. God, a couple years ago. It's not good. <laughs> the program's not working very well out there. All maybe. Right. Let, let's hit the engagement major job before we start dissing <laughs> Akron any more than we need to. <laughs> How did he miss the open goal? Six by four, and he comes up zero. Oh, oh no! Oh yes, he missed it. He's missed it. How on earth did he miss that? Uh, in case you missed it, the World Championship of Online Poker 2016 has come to a close. Um, the f- what? Well, the final feature event was the main event. There was a couple events after. The $5,000 main event we just talked about that you played in drew 1,772 entries with 319 re-entries. I was two of those. Well, you were one of each, right? But yeah. Yeah, so uh, the the prize pool. So this was a $10 million guarantee. (laughs) The prize (laughs) pool. We all looked up at this one. I guess. Saw this. 10 million and 52,000 was how much was in the prize pool. So five people or five entries uh, within get, the, over the ten entries, the guarantee. 5K main event. Sorry, ten en- yeah, ten entries um, came very close to a. Um, imagine while you were playing, uh, there there was talk about this being an overlay or a layover, as MJ used to call it, <laughs> uh, where you know you were playing this event and there could be a significant uh, overlay coming up. Yeah, I mean, I didn't keep an eye on it myself because it's not like I have horses that I would call on a moment's notice and say yeah, you yeah. should jump into. But but clearly, this is what happens when you have guaranteed events and there's the potential for overlay on a site like PokerStars. If this is happening on Bovada, if this is happening on some small, you know, like ACR or something like that, there's a very good chance the overlay just is an overlay. But there's almost no chance that in a major tournament on a site like Stars that they don't make guarantees. And that's why guarantees are fantastic, especially for online poker. Because as soon as it threatens to not make it, everybody's on the phone with the rent. I'll buy 20%. I'll yeah, buy 30%. I'll buy 50%. I mean, people are just people are just getting in. Uh, you know, there's always the danger of some unethical, shady business of people multi-accounting. And we'll, we'll see. Hopefully, uh, hopefully, nobody's sister wins the tournament. <laughs> uh, remember Mark Telcher yes. uh, back in the day? Uh, you know, his sister's yeah, he account. He had who, the money taken away. He he yep. played on his sister's account, won the tournament won after the tournament. busting out, um, and ended up getting disqualified, and right. everybody moved up a spot. After he, they found out, like, his sister had, like, two lifetime VPPs, right. and, like, never, right. never played above, like, two cent, four cent, or something like was that. Was that back when you were th- working there? Because that was a long time ago. Uh, it was not. It was I, I was, I was gone from there, and I believe when I found out, I was playing in EPT Barcelona, and I think I was actually wearing a headset because I was commentating on EPT Barcelona oh. uh, when when that news came out, and so we were all obviously we didn't talk about it on the EPT stream, but as soon as we were talking on the break, it was it was the big news. Uh, I, so I don't remember the exact year, but it was but in like oh six or oh seven yeah. or something like that. Uh, I remember I remember the big uh, 
the big winner from that payday was Vanessa Russo, who I believe she moved won, up a spot. Yeah, she moved up, I think from third to second for like you know three hundred thousand yeah. or something like that. But yeah, sorry, but speculating on possible unethical play from people who create their own moral universes. <laughs> um, yeah, there's not going to be there's there's I mean, especially for Nolan and Holdem. Like if, if this were somehow like a, an X guaranteed five card you know, high low draw with a you right. know, with a spit card or something. Different story. Different story, but but it's never gonna happen. Everybody can play Nolan and Holdem. That's right. Um there was some so it got down to four handed and there was some interesting deal discussion that happened. And somebody posted it in the uh the rail thread on two plus two, uh the chat, they they took a screenshot of the chat. It was it was pretty interesting. Uh the chip leader is a guy named two J two and uh, they ask for the ICM numbers from the host. They pause the tournament, ask for the uh, forehanded, ask for the ICM numbers, and the host comes back with the, with the numbers. And Jay says, "Okay, uh, I'll take uh, fifteen thousand. He's the chip leader. Right. Um, I think he's got uh, his M is. I'll get to it. I think I have it later in my notes. But forty-five. His M, yeah, right. Sorry, now. his M is forty-five, and the others, uh, the other three guys are all between twelve and fifteen. So there, right. there's these ICM considerations, right. and they're uh, not massively short stacked. I mean, an, an M of twelve is pretty good, not bad. but you're, you're, they're still in a situation where they're actually crippled against each other because they don't want to play against a pot. Yeah, play against him in a pot. You open, he shoves. Your range yeah. calling the, is the, pretty the, ugly. The Joe McKeon situation. Exactly. Yeah. So um, J uh, JJ asks for fifteen thousand from each of them over ICM. Love it. And love it. I, I said this last week, but it's you know just it's one of those bucket list things to just like have people buy the balls and, right. and, and negotiate. We're your, talking about a large amount of money though. Yep. Where well, this is uh he's his I think his one point one million is his ICM number for the leader. Wow. So fifteen thousand is what, one point four percent of that or one point three percent something sure, like that. Sure. Something small. Um uh, the others say no right away. Yeah. Uh and then uh JJ then says, Okay, tell you what, give me Ten thousand each, thirty thousand total. I don't care how you do it. Instead of forty-five, I'll, my my final offer is yeah. thirty thousand each, and I'll take that. And uh, the others all start discussing. Mm -hmm. um, he, J, JJ points out, you guys are in a really bad ICM spot. Um, well, the difference between first and fourth is a million. So right. it's one point five million for first and five hundred seventy-nine thousand for fourth. Even the difference between second and fourth is uh, five hundred and thirty thousand. Yeah, that's that's a ton, right? Right, so right. We're talking about money. So one guy says, "Okay, I'll give the fifteen thousand, th and the two others say that they'll give seven thousand. Okay. So now Many we're zeros. <laughs> we're at twenty-nine thousand. Right. Remember, JJ said thirty thousand was that's the, the lowest he would yep. go. They now get to twenty-nine thousand. JJ says, "Nope, thirty. Uh, well, let's play. Thirty thousand yeah. is what I wanted. You're giving and me and nobody 29, was 000. willing to give him an extra one thousand. And nobody was willing. So yeah. they played it out, and JJ won yeah. and took down the one point five million, and he would have got one point one in a deal. But I uh, love this stuff. He I shuts mean, it down for a thousand dollars. I love this stuff. I have no idea who this guy is. He's my hero. Um, <laughs> I just, I, I love, I love hard ass, badass negotiators like this who just know that they're in the nut position." Yeah. I mean, I think I don't know if that makes me a bad person because in oh, general, like, I, uh, yeah, like in, in general, I'm it's not like, like spectator that. Spectator like, sport, really. yeah, it, it really <laughs> is. But you know, but you know, it's funny that you would say it that way because um, back when you you like uh, like you used to let the rail chat, which was obviously the worst thing ever. Yeah, you would often see the rail like turn against the big sack or the gre the, the cheer quote, against greedy guy um, because it, it it can it tends to call. go against it tends to go against like people's sense of fairness that this guy can bully the other guys right. around and so like you would always see like you know a lot of times you know you know he turns up he ends up winning the tournament a lot of times he he doesn't doesn't win the tournament maybe 30 percent of the time or whatever yeah. just uh, you know a lot of times and they say oh you should have made a deal what an idiot like what they they're really happy to see him lose and it and it's just because i think it's this sort of sense of justice thing that going on like oh here's this guy he's he's guaranteed 1.1 million but he's trying to negotiate an extra ten thousand dollars like this what a jerk and, yeah and you usually almost always see and and this is back when i did work at poker stars and i had full access to chat logs and i had to go you know FML. I had to go through all of this stuff to just sort of to, to to see what actually happened in the chat history, so that we could like 
ban arrange people. the trip. No, 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 no. It was actually because back in the day, there's no deal making software. So if two people agreed oh. to make a deal, so like, oh, you had to wade through all the spectator chat. Well, to yeah, find to the... make sure we had a deal. So, so what you would have to do back in the day, if you're playing an MTT and you wanted to make a deal, was you had to uh, telephone somebody in Costa Rica. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, Hi, almo almost, playing. <laughs> almost. You you had to wait for a host to come at your table, and then the host would so say. Pause your game. You like you. Pa the host would pause the tournament. We had we had the ability to stop a particular tournament, and they would say like, "Do you agree that you'll get like five thousand nine hundred and seventy dollars or something?" And they would get yes. And okay, or do you, Adam, agree that you'll get five thousand nine hundred and twenty-four dollars? And you say yes. And then we do that, and then you'd have to go back and make a manual transfer from one guy to the other guy based on the deal. So whoever oh. ends up winning first, you'd actually have to take that money out of that guy's account and put it in the second place guy's account. That's how Star Software worked back wow. in the day because it was doing it. I mean, yeah. it was the pioneer days. Sure, we, didn't have, we didn't have very much. I Somebody mean, hits the, re the, the withdrawal button really quick before well, we you have a Well, we control those too, so that's no big deal. <laughs> like, we can, we can reverse withdrawals too. That, yeah. that was but yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, that's what I did in my previous lately. And so you would, the point is you would see that everybody hates the greedy guy. Like, none 99 times yeah. out of 100 but i i just i don't know maybe it's the maybe it's the old john d rockefeller uh <laughs> like you know hero one percenters yeah uh some other interesting notes uh daniel negranu he plays one uh wakoop event which surprised me that he only played one event yeah. and he ends up winning it he he wins uh, event 71 the 2100 dollar horse championship certainly not surprising that it's a mixed game uh daniel mm, loves, right. lo loves him some mixed games he was in toronto he was uh doing i saw him tweeting that's probably why he didn't play the rest of it he's probably in vegas the rest of the time right Maybe, yeah, he yeah. could have been in Vegas, but uh, he was home, I guess, for, for this one event. He ends up getting heads up with Isol Derwal, which could you ask for a better heads up? For, if you're poker stars. I mean, he's <laughs> been playing for a long time now, hasn't he? Like, shouldn't he be competent at... Isol yeah, like so. This games. is a mixed game. Yeah, no, oh, for yeah. sure. He plays, he plays heads up mixed games against. Oh, I'm not okay, surprised sorry, that he got sorry. there. Sorry, I'm I, saying it's the dream. I thought you were saying the dream for Daniel. No, 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 no. for okay. poker stars. Okay, yeah, he, obviously. To market, this is yeah. your number one guy and your number one crazy guy that everybody yeah, loves to right, follow. Right. Playing heads up for for a uh, Wakoop Championship. Yeah, I that definitely was cool. the rail going crazy. There will probably yeah. like. Uh, I, I, I say this every time that Scoop or W Coop rolls around, but I, I would definitely be excited to watch the uh, replays of these. That would be a good one. Because uh, obviously, as everybody knows, you get heads-up replays. Uh, for, excuse me, face-up card replays. Final so you get tables, to see yeah. How they uh, they get to play heads up against each other? Do, do you know if it was a long heads up match or was it? I don't know. Didn't close? didn't okay. watch it. I know previously David Tuckman has like done voiceover over specific hands of yeah tables, but, but I, I like watching every i mean yeah. i'm a complete like i'm a strategy guy and like I'll, i'm gonna watch I, if, if, I, if a final table is 187 hands i don't want 12 right you know because those yeah. are just the ones that that's are, what i found that know. was wrong with it is because he it would be cut off and i feel like they slowed down the software see there would, it would just take <laughs> forever possible. and it was it they was hit the pause terrible, button yeah, but yeah. It, it, I mean, the context matters so much, right? Like, you know, you, you, you see these hands that get played, and when you watch highlights of a poker tournament, it's a, it's a lot like watching highlights of, of a hockey game or a soccer match or something like that. You don't see everything that set up the, the right. goal, the, the thing that happened or whatever. You're, just, you're, you're literally just seeing highlights. You don't have the context of the, the game. Mm -hmm. uh, Mike Lee at Goliefsko ended up in fifth in that tournament. Uh, hopefully he had a decent... Uh, He's Canadian? He had a decent series because uh, I need to take some money off him in the fantasy uh, sports. We got the uh, we got our hockey draft. Well, you know he up. played. I mean, does anybody play more poker than Mike Lee? There, yeah. there are very he few plays. people in the world. The that man play just more plays more poker. poker. Yeah. Michael, yeah. Um, PLO legend Isil uh takes down event seventy six, the three hundred and twenty dollars mix max PLO. Uh, no <laughs> That's Isildur in. Beating out uh, 637 players takes down 34K for the win. Uh, I thought you'd like that. I knew we'd get the drop. That's but. that's odd odds in, actually. Oh. They're friends. Okay. Yeah. He was doing Isildur in. Uh No. That was somebody else doing odd odds in. Um, but um, but <laughs> <laughs> give me a second. A name drop here. There's, I <laughs> name uh, drop hung out with those guys in Vegas yeah, last I remember. summer. That was, that was pretty cool. They're, they're very fun guys. Fun they like guys. to have their fun. Uh, <laughs> Phil Galfond uh, ends up taking down or uh, winning his first Wakoop uh, title. Actually, first Coop title, I believe. Didn't he finish second? I thought he finished second. Uh, he, no, he took down event 77, the okay. uh, 215 Sunday warm-up. No, he came in second. Two days ago? That's what I, I thought. I, saw it, on I saw it on Twitter. He finished second. Did he finish second? Yeah. Looking oh. at it right now. Mighty 28 tops Phil Galfon for event 77 title. So, yeah. So, But second is pretty good. What, what event is that? 77. 
crazy. What did I read that he wanted? I don't I know. I thought I read it on the blog that he wanted. You, you were just you just wanted to believe that our sponsor, RunItOnce.com. Revisionist <laughs> history. I'm trying to I'm trying to give him his first I'm, title. I'm, I'm help, yeah, I'm helping you. But hey, I mean. <laughs> I uh, thought I read that he wanted. I uh, the, apologize. The, Finish the, second. The best uh, the best uh, thing was was uh, there's a there's a Twitter interaction and I'll, maybe I'll find it and I'll throw it in the thread so I can do it justice it's about Galfond uh, pimping RunItOnce.com in the in the chat. Oh, good. Uh, but so yeah. So you know our uh, our, 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 our almost benevolent sponsor. Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, did you see the story about the mini Wacoop? You know how they they're running sure. the concurrent series. Yep. So uh, this French nurse named Ewan Roberts, he gets home. He plays uh, a two dollar. He fires up two tournaments. When you uh, said French nurse, this is not what I was thinking about. It's a guy. Okay. There are male nurses. So right. he sits down, plays a $2 and an $11 mini Wacoop event at the same time. Two tournaments. Oh, I did hear about this. And he takes them both down. Yeah. Beating out 30,000 total players. Yeah. This is a T-Chan. I mean, it's T-Chan it's Square. This is well square. beyond. This is T-Chan Square. <laughs> this is well beyond anything T-Chan ever did. Uh, T-Chan T-Chan beat a field of, I think... 101 and 590 or something. This is in a scoop limit, uh, Lim uh, limit hold them many years ago. You want two at the same time. Uh, this is not, this is, yeah, this is, I mean, this is two, two five digit fields, I think. Something uh, crazy. It, it's, yeah. the, the, it's, it's astronomical odds. I mean, 10,000 times 10,000 is uh, many zeros. It's many, <laughs> where's the many zeros? It's, drop? it's 10, <laughs> it's 100 million. It's 100 million to one. It's so, my I feet mean, warm at night. Uh, so yeah, it, mine, mine is something like, you know, like five hundred thousand to one or something. It warmed my feelings up nice. Fifty thousand to one compared to hundred million to one. I'm not even in the same stratosphere. I think if I won the small, medium, and the large, then we'd be talking something. Something. In the I same. think I'm willing to hand my title over for most impressive. Um, you won Roberts Coupe Day to uh, to French nurse Ewan Roberts. He wins 19000 total for the two tournaments, which for a two dollar and eleven dollar buy-in is pretty cool. Stars ended up giving him a five thousand dollar main event. World, world Champions Just world. like free 5K. So here, yeah, here's 5K. Here, here, it's like, we'll, we'll, we'll it's back like, you. It's like they're backing him in a tournament. Yeah. Right? It's, like, <laughs> right. it's like you're clearly good enough to be plus EV in this thing. <laughs> I don't care if you beat a bunch of $2 players. That's fucking impressive. Because if, if he wins that tournament, they have so much PR. Oh, yeah. He's not going to... I mean, he win 19,000. He's not going to just pile five. Probably not going to pile Pro five yeah, into I mean, it's a, way a too big of, I mean, he might play a couple hundred dollars worth of satellites, but yeah, that's... And that's, if he could... If they stay, if they uh, buy him into the tournament and he right. ends up binking it, they're getting way this more is, than... Right, because this is a guy who's used to playing $11 tournaments, right? right? Like, I don't care if you win, you know, you win you, you win the tournament, but you're still playing... You're still an $11 tournament player. Maybe you move up to being a $100 tournament player, $200 tournament player, but unless you're, unless you're Tom Dwan back in circa 2003 or something like that, yeah. Yeah. You're probably not going crazy on this. So we were talking earlier uh, about the World Championship main event that you played in, uh, sort of World uh, Championship Online Poker main event. Um, give me a rough idea of the relative toughness of your tables. Very small sample size, Depends I understand. On the table. But we were talking <laughs> <Yes>. about <laughs> we were talking about you know uh, is this a soft tournament? What was your experience in the event? So I drew a fantastic starting table. Really? Uh, yeah. I mean. Um, what, why would you like people nine xing? Like what was happening? Oh no no no! I mean, you know, again, we're all relative to the field. This right? is like 2016 a, soft table. This, this is, is 2008 this is the soft 2016 table. internet <laughs> poker soft table, not the 2006 Jamie Gold uh, World right. Series starting table. Uh, no, I mean we're just talking about people who are missing value on hands, and okay, um, we're talking about people missing bluffs, and they're they're just kind of like missing some concepts, and they're playing a little bit scared. Um, we can do some we can do some T-Chan report maybe a little bit later on the show. We will, if yeah. Got some time, but uh, you know, there's there's definitely some spots where you know you'd see hands get turned over at showdown, and you're like, well, he missed a street of value, or he missed a bluff, or or gotcha. you know, he put himself in a position where he should have won a smaller pot, or should have lost less, or 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 sort of well, should have won a bigger pot, or should have lost less. So you're just seeing that, and and um. You know, I, I asked JC, who of course had a piece of me, and you know, he, you know, he was saying like, yeah, I don't really know the guys at your table or anything like that, so that's a pretty good thing. Then later on, I fired my sec, I, I, I went bust in the first table. Um, a guy, guy opened with fives uh, early position. I three bet it uh, with aces, and then the one of the blinds called. Oh, sorry, the, the first guy opened. I three bet with aces, and then a guy called both raises from the blind. Uh, the first guy folded. He, the first guy ended up having fives and flopped a set on me and took the rest of my stack. I think it came like nine, eight, five or something, and we were happy to get it in. I was like, oh, this guy called two raises with fives and beat a short stack. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that was, you know, that was a good spot. So I fired my second bullet. Uh, you know, went good for a while. I think I doubled my stack. It went well, and then I got moved to like this just 
you know, obscenely bad table with not only JC, who of course has a uh, <laughs> amusingly has a piece of me in the tournament. Like I'm not even I'm I'm arguably not even in the tournament because of him. But uh, Ben eighty six is in there. Ben Tolerine. Um, uh, uh, Chris Vogelsang is in that table. I mean, I just there's there's like four guys that we all know, and it was just like Gross. a shocking table. But it broke very quickly. Um, oh, that's good. So, yeah, um, it was you know it. it there's definitely variance with respect to the tables for sure, but yeah. I Softest mean, tournament. I don't know. I mean, I didn't go deep enough to say. I mean, I only played the thing for five hours, and I only had three different tables, so I can't really tell you. Uh, oh, how good it was. Know. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's move on. Uh, in case you missed it, uh, Party Poker is anonymizing hand histories. Did I say that right? Anonymizing? Anonymizing? Yeah. Sure. Something in there. Uh, machete. <laughs> he, uh, all opponents. So now when you download your hand histories, they're going to still be stored on your computer. But when you right. look at them at party poker, you're not going to see, uh, the other opponent's names. You'll see your name, but all the other players are randomized player one, player two, player three. Kind of looks like four. boom player. <laughs> kind of <laughs> like boom player. Yeah, player exactly. Player one. Um, and, uh, I, I wanted just to read from the announcement here. Party poker announces an update to its plan changes to improve the ecology of its poker room and promote fair and ethical gameplay. Uh, uh, a first phase of improvements at the end of 2015 saw cash game players joining a room wine waiting list and being randomly seated when a seat matching their preference became available. Plus, names of opponents only being shown once the first hand is dealt, so you can you know bum hunt or whatever. Um, having co a consolidated, they didn't. That's this is me saying <laughs> they didn't put that in the in the press release. Having consolidated a vast amount of feedback from players across forums, social media channels, and our customer service team. Party Poker will be introducing a second wave of changes in October. These changes will only affect cash games on Party Poker, not tournaments. Local hand histories will still be available for download. However, player screen names will be anonymized. Players on screen name will be visible, as we said. Uh, players will still be able to view the number of hands they played, win rate, and other stats to help them improve their play. Um, the terms and conditions will change with regards to prohibiting the use of seeding scripts. Following these amendments, players using any such software will be initially issued a warning notice before being banned from using their account. Uh, along with these changes, player will be allowed, players will be allowed to make a one-off screen name change. So exactly one seems like a weird one, but anyway. Yeah, I don't know. I would, yeah, I'm, when we're talking about anonymous tables and stuff, it seems like you could probably throw a few more in there. Uh, but I, I like these changes a lot. I, I think this is uh, good, and I know there's this debate back and forth with with regards to hand histories and d data mining and stuff like that. But um, I I think this is I know it's going to be unpopular with some, but I like the I like the changes. Right. I mean, I think the only strong argument against doing some anonymous hand histories has always been what we did before what we've discussed many times on the show which is historically the way that cheating rings and other sort of bad sight things, cheating players sight cheating players and and any sort of malfeasance and and uh, unethical behavior has been found by the poker community through the use of mining and right. that's that's historically the issue you know we found people cheating or super using uh all this kind of bad stuff is is through the through people who have gathered a large amount of data, throw them in the poker tracker, and being able to find them. And anonymous anonymizing people completely takes away from that ability. So now, what you're in, with the situation with with Bodog and with the situation with Party Poker is is that you have to trust that the site does a good enough job of security, keeping out the bad guys, and of course that they're ethical themselves, like we were talking about with as you were alluding to with Absolute Poker, that yep. the site actually cheating itself. You know, they have to be up to par with their security. Now, Party Poker's been around the game for whatever, fifteen years. They they should Publicly have a publicly traded company. Yeah, they should have a good security operating team, but we're not in the boardrooms every day. We don't know what kind of priority they place on game security and game integrity. Hopefully it's good because uh, those guys are up for challenge because they're not going to have the assistance of the poker community anymore. And hopefully nobody tries to get brave and use this as an opportunity to do something unethical. You hit the nail on the head. You have to trust that the website isn't going to be cheating uh, the players. Right. And, and, and that they're able to capture colluders. And they're able to do their job and capture yeah. colluders. But the, uh, the other option is to have this data mining environment where right. it erodes the casual players enjoying enjoyment of the game. And or it takes their money faster than they're aware of. It's not even sometimes right. the enjoyment of the game. Sometimes they're just they're not aware of how badly they're being exploited. So do you want to just 
you look that if you keep going further and further and down that road, you have less and less games to play in. Right. You have less and less uh, casual players. And at some point, it becomes a, a serious, serious issue. Where we are with that, that's arguable, but it get, it's clearly not getting better. Right. And and the thing so, with seating script, I think that's a that's, that's for a most one. part it's it's welcomed by most people because most people realize that the kind of predatory nature of one fish that's down the table and the waitlist is ninety people long instantly is not a good one. Uh, is not like that's the one where you're talking about the player experience where the guy sits there and goes, "What a bunch of fucking jackasses!" Right? Like you know. Uh, you know, you have these games where like eight guys are sitting out or something like that, or you've got no waiting list or no game starts, and then the second, the you know, two guys playing heads up, uh, regs playing heads up against each other, and then the third fish sits down. Bum, and bum, then bum. Yeah, exactly. Just snap fills. It's that. That's the sort of stuff that anybody with a brain notices. Um, and yeah, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm seating glad those are gone. Silly thing, yeah. Uh, all right, in case you missed it, uh, PokerStars has backed up on their 20% payout structure for EP EPTs. We talked about this a couple months back. Poker st PokerStars and the EPT had decided to change to go to 20% payouts, 1.1 right. um, for a min cash of your buy-in, uh, and, and this kind of thing for uh, this year's EPTs. Um, uh, they've kind of backed off on that. I'm going to read it here. As mentioned in discussions during Barcelona, we strongly believe and have crunched the numbers and the available data as well that paying out a slightly higher percentage of players is better for the overall growth of the game we all love. It allows for approximately 5% more players to go home feeling that, like they won something and or have another shot at winning top prizes at final tables in a new event. We spoke with the high roller community and there are definite differences in the poker economy between players playing five and six figure buy-ins and players playing three or four figure buy-ins. Um, the two biggest discussion points were about the 20% uh, being the floor, the lowest possible payout, um, or the ceiling, the highest possible amount of payouts, uh, and what exactly min cash would be. Uh, to the first one, we've decided to flip from having 20% as the floor, so the minimum number of payouts, um, to, to being the ceiling. Uh, to the second one, that was an interesting discussion as many players were okay with a 1.1 type cash out, but many felt like they just got their money back and didn't win anything. Uh, since one of the key points in our change was to create more winners and more winning moments, the 1.1 cash doesn't necessarily qualify as a winning moment to some of our players and an amendment was needed. Therefore, we've decided to go back and raise the min cash to something with a more uh, with more substance and is now 1.5 range uh, of the buy-in. So uh, taking all of these things into account, the following payouts will be in place for EPT Malta and EPT Prague. All events of 10,000 euros or more will retain the previous 12 to 15% payout structure. So they're going back to the payout structure before they moved it. For all high roller For I, all 10,000 and yeah. over. Uh, all other events will pay out an expanded 17 to 20% of the field, but a 20% ceiling will be in place. For the extended payouts, we've made adjustments to increase the minimum cash and give all players more meaningful return. We've also flattened the incline to eliminate the double bubble effect that took place during EPT Barcelona. New, new min cash should fall around 1.5% buy-in. Um, 1.5 times the buy-in. Sorry, 1.5 times the buy-in. Uh, and, and I think back to when we had this discussion, and I think you and I both agreed that going from 12 to 15 percent all the way to 20 was a bit of a big jump. Yeah, I don't think they sure. realized how big of a jump that was, right. um, and especially in the higher roller communities where right. you know it's it's pretty you know these guys are are there to play poker and they've got backers and you know there's it's a big deal to them. Yeah, yeah. the casual you know we were talking about. I think for the smaller tournaments, yeah, okay, maybe casual players like they enjoy min caching and all this kind of stuff, so maybe it makes sense. The the seventeen to twenty percent of the field feels like a, a compromise sort of between stars or slash E V T and the community. I mean I think I think the players having their way probably still prefer sort of in the fifteen to seventeen percent range. Somewhere in that but range. they can sort of live with, with the seventeen percent as long or seventeen to twenty percent as long as it's never more than twenty percent, which is what uh what what's promising. The one thing that, that I mean, I, I think I'm in the minority on this, but I'm just going to go and throw it out there, is that I never really thought it was that bad to have a 1.1x min cash for a lot of these tournaments. Because, uh, I mean, the reason why is because you look at what a live tournament, and actually an online tournament for that matter, looks like near the bubble with all the silly stalling and all the, the silly play that happens near the bubble, like where even when we're talking about 20, 30, 40 players from the money where people actually shouldn't 
properly realistically be stalling. And anything that sort of mitigates that for me, I'm kind of happy with that, to be honest. And so what, by making the, the min cache smaller, I don't personally have a problem with it. I do understand where most people, like m I'm in the minority of this, I think most people disagree, like having 1.5x is sort of, it feels psychologically like more of a win. You know, if you enter a $1,000 buy-in tournament, you get $1,100. I mean, I don't know if that feels like a win to you after you play for two or three days. I'm not really, so again, I think this is a diff uh, 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 aimed at a different sort of demographic of player when they're worried about this kind of thing. For me, 1.1 to 1.5, isn't a big deal. It's pretty disappointing either way. Right? It's disappointing right? either way. Yeah. I'm trying to win the big prize. Yeah. Uh, the the 1.1 to 1.5 gap isn't going to make me much happier. Right. I still missed out on it's, a, a it's whole It's pretty bunch. kissing your sister. You know? It is, but I'm not the person that they're aiming this at. I don't think we are either. They're aiming this at the guy who's uh, on vacation or takes time off work and goes right. and plays. And he can go back and say, eh, I won. Does 15. that make a big deal? I mean, like, you know. To you, some, I think it does. The difference between... Be between like let's, let's say it's a five thousand euro buy-in, and yeah. they can go back and say, yeah, "Well, I cash for seventy five hundred euros instead of uh, it's 6, five thousand, and I cash for five fifty five hundred. You know, like, uh, I th yeah, I think I at mean, some point maybe. it's it's uh, you know. The I mean, I know people who like you know people like who go to the casino with like and buy in for two hundred dollars, and they like they cash out for like two hundred and thirty, and they're fucking thrilled, right? Like well, that's it. And they can maybe if the one point five x is gonna cover their expenses for the week, and they feel like they had a free roll, they went and I get played it. in I a mean, tournament. I mean, it's hard for us to understand because we don't think that way. I don't think, but um, I can see why how some would. I guess is yeah. What I, I mean, I, I've always just thought like, I mean, I've I've always I've even thought that like because I, I I just. I used to love, uh, you know, I've been playing MTTs for a really long time, and I used to really love big bubbles because you could abuse yeah. these people. But then people started stalling, and now I'm almost thinking, like, let's just have no bubbles, right? Like, l let's literally have, like, one quarter. First guy out gets 25 cents. The next yeah, guy I mean, gets like, almost cents. not not quite that. <laughs> like, but, but, yeah, like, to that effect where, like, you you you, you could pay, like, 35% of the field, like a quarter of the buy-in or something like that. Like, I just, like, I'm so fucking sick of the way people... Can you have a tournament it. that everybody cashes? Well... For some amount of money? That'd be perfect. You're, if 5,000 euro buy-in, the first guy out gets 50 cents. Yeah, you could Next do that. Next guy out gets 62 cents. You could do that. I mean, the winner There'd might... be zero bubble. Yeah, the winner might get, like, four times the buy-in or something. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. It's, it's possible. You could do that. <laughs> I don't think anybody would sign up for it. But no, I don't think so either. <laughs> They'd, they'd probably just go play cash games, which were... Making. Anyway, cool that uh, the APT is listening to the players. Uh, they, they're they clearly... Yeah. Um, t did a pretty big about face on uh, on the... F gave right. Relative to the feedback that they got from the players, right. which I thought was pretty cool. Agreed. Uh, good on the APT for doing that. Uh, in case you missed it, well, this is uh, an interesting thing from one of our sponsors. So Sharkscope has decided they want to uh, have a contest for our listeners. And wh how this contest is going to work is... We're going to ask you a question, you, our listeners. Uh, I've started a thread in uh, our forum at the PokerCast at 2plus2.com. Uh, you can go over there and check it out. There's a special SharkScope thread for contests and, and such. And we're going to ask a question. The person who gets uh, the most parts of the question correct is going to win a one-year gold subscription to SharkScope.com's database. Cool. Uh, $312 value. Uh, second and third are going to get a gold, a three-month gold sub for uh, that's worth $87. And here's the question. Answer it as detailed as you can. Head on over to our forum at 2plus2.com. Uh, here the question is, according to SharkScope's database and excluding spin and go style tournaments, in the last month, what is the most frequently entered type of online tournament? Uh, we want as many details as possible, and the answer, poker site, stake, entrance, all other relevant details, uh, the closest guess wins. So mm -hmm. throw everything in there that you can, that you think is going to be uh, described the most frequently entered type of online tournament, um, and uh, we'll pick some winners from, from, all, the, from all the I predict people a tie. That post. You predict a tie? I predict somebody is going to get a tie. <laughs> <laughs> Could be. Well, if you're going to guess number of entrants, it's going to be hard to tie. Uh, that's true. But uh, all right, uh, head on over to our forum and check that out. Uh, we're going to go to a break. We're going to come back. We've got some hands. We've got some 140 or less. We've got some emails. Tons of stuff to get to. You're listening to the 2 Plus 2 Poker Cast, sponsored by RunItOnce.com. Okay, people. Most of the kittens have perished. There are a few left you can save, though, and here's how to do it. Get involved with the Poker Cast by emailing your questions, suggestions for the show, or even record a sound clip. Adam will be using the best ones on the air. 
Well, let's face it, probably the worst ones as well. I can see you there at your computer. Send an email right now. Totally disagree with one of Adam's takes last week? Send an email. Love last week's interview? Email. Want to know how much cash Adam has on him right now? Email. Pokercast at 2plus2.com is the address. Ship the funny to Adam today. Hey, it's Mike from the 2 Plus 2 store and professionalpoker.com. 2 Plus 2 is pleased to announce the release of their most anticipated book in ages, Applications of No Limit Hold'em, a guide to understanding theoretical sound poker by Matthew Jonda. This book will give you the ability to create the bet sizings and ranges which will beat the better players. The theory in this book is not designed to be complex or abstract, but rather it's intended to be applied immediately, producing better overall results. Many confusing concepts such as overbetting, balancing multiple bet sizing ranges, donk betting, and check raising as a preflop raiser are crucial to a player strategy despite few players implementing them or talking about them. And after reading this book, you should be able to not only conceptually understand these ideas, but also know how to begin incorporating them into your game and thereby successfully compete against tough opponents. And at the 2 Plus 2 store, we accept all credit cards, plus PayPal and NetTeller. What's up, guys? If you're serious about online poker tournament statistics, you got to check out Sharkscope.com. They've been the leader in online poker tournament tracking for over 10 years. If you've ever had the experience of being in an online tournament and being worried that your opponent might be a dangerous shark, Sharkscope.com will tell you. And your first five searches every day are free. If you log in with your Facebook account, they'll double that to 10 searches. So get on over to Sharkscope.com, track your stats, and improve your win rate today. Hey PokerCast fans, don't forget to follow me, Adam, and Ross on the old social medias. I'm at TChanPoker on Twitter, and once in a while I'll even talk poker if I'm not trying to hit him in the face. If Adam ever gets home from hockey practice, he tweets at PokerCastAdam, and Ross is at PokerCastRoss whenever he's sweating the Chicago's. Hit us up, and try to keep it to 140 or less. I mean, fewer. Welcome back to the 2 Plus 2 PokerCast, presented by RunItOnce.com. Uh, this is normally the uh, Roscoe report. Uh, you could edit Ross it. is retired from poker, and he currently because uh, uh, the Chicago's are still playing. The I, I am. I'm not retired. There are poker. a lot more Chicago's playing specifically at this time of year now because now the football Chicago's and the Blackhawks the, the, started their exhibition. Yeah, actually, season, that's yeah. right. The football, all and the, the hockey, all the Chicago's are are playing <laughs> except for the the ones that play the bouncy ball. Yeah, the <laughs> basketball, <laughs> and that's coming like a week from. Yeah, now. it's exactly. It's around the corner. So, uh, how is the uh, sports betting going, by the way? Uh, it's been pretty good the last couple of weeks. You're running good, except for um, I was tailing a guy who was really on the uh, the, sh- the football Chicago. Oh, the Bears, and uh, they're uh, not so good. <laughs> You're not so good. Not no. so sick. I think <laughs> is the terminology. Not so sick. Yeah, the record was not so sick. No. Um, but it's it's pretty fun. It's almost over. Yeah. I don't know. What are you gonna do? You're gonna go through baseball with draws. Value of my life. I like. I don't really. I'm not stoked to put money on stars. I'm really excited for run at once. I'm yeah. gonna get on there. But uh. I don't know. We'll figure see, it out. See always, happens. always seem to figure it out. Uh, let's do uh, the Roscoe report slash Terrence report. <laughs> Good old Roscoe. Sure glad he's all right. Hey, your boy, you gotta pick your spots. Good. You gotta make hay while the sun shines. Hey, God, dear. you dipstick. That's you, good. You I won't. like that a lot. <laughs> Even Thanks. though it's the uh, uh, Terrence report, we got to play the drop. I mean, the Roscoe report no, intro is too good. Air, air horns aren't allowed, though. No air horns. Oh, you cut uh, the air horns out. Yeah, yeah nice. he cuts the air horns because uh, the T-Chan report is air horn free. So this <laughs> is the $5,000 World Championship of Online Poker main event. It T-Chan is. that played uh, many hands, many zeros in this in this uh, fine tournament. Uh, got some hands for us. Why don't you... Uh, you do want me to talk us through? Yeah, sure. Talk so us this it. is uh, my first table. I registered maybe two hours late, got a nap, myself a nap in case I, I ran uh, deep. So uh, I think at this point we are, mm, I don't remember, I think the blinds might be uh, 25500. It's got to be 25500. Yeah. And uh, we got an early position raise from a guy I don't know because it's uh, we're brand new. This is, I think, literally my second hand of the tournament. Okay. Uh, so this is uh, after I hit you guys both up on Skype and asked you if you wanted to buy 1% for good luck. Yeah. Um, 
you know, or sorry, before that. So early position raises to 1500. Um, it's called in middle to late position uh, by, you know, a, a, a reg, an MTT reg. Uh, and he calls an eye call from the big blind with the 910 of hearts, uh, which is obviously pretty standard. Obviously, you want to see a flop with the 910 of hearts went for one raise. The flop comes down pretty darn good, comes down 10 of spades, 9 of diamonds, 3 of diamonds. For the top of the, the top of two, top of the two, as we as we in call Vancouver, it, Vancouver call, it, call it. Why do we call it? That? Is, is that one guy in particular? Yeah, it was uh, it was one Asian dude who yeah. called. You can't it say top two correctly. Top, you can't say top two. He called it top of the top two. Of two. So. I, it's funny. As soon as I said, I wanted to say it. We yeah. both said it at the same time. <laughs> um, Only Vancouver people get that. Poker is nice. A lot of poker. Yeah, it wasn't Chow. But <laughs> was it Chow? <laughs> it wasn't Chow, but it's somebody, no. someone. Um, so I decided to check, and the preflop raiser bets uh, twenty six hundred and forty five into this pot of about, I guess, 4,800 or so. Um, the player in between folds. I raise about, I think, 40% of the pot to 9,600, and the preflop raiser calls. Uh, so, you know, I'm thinking, you know, the, he can have a pretty wide There's a whole bunch range. of bad cards you don't want to see. There's a whole bunch of car, uh, car, uh, bad cards I want to see. I think... I think I what what I said uh, to Robin as he was here is like I would like th I would like basically anything deuce through six except a three right now is yeah. pretty much what I'm going for right here. Um, the turn to Queen of Spades, which is not a terrible card. Uh, not terrible, honest. not great. It's not bait. I mean, Queen Ten just got there on me, and obviously King Jack is down the nuts. Queens, two queens. It's, yeah. But I mean, like literally, we were hoping for a Deuce Three, Four, Five, Ten, or Nine. So I mean, you know, it's it, not the worst. It's not the best. It's not the worst. It's not the best. I decide I should still bet, uh, just in case he has something like Queen Jack. I'm still ahead. All these kinds of things. Uh, so I bet about third pot. Know, uh, I think it's maybe yeah it's it's about yeah probably I think it's a little bit more than that I think it's maybe forty percent of the pot about ninety three hundred uh, and he calls and now I'm thinking well could be ahead could be behind really don't know at this point the river's a jack of hearts so the final board is now ten nine three queen jack so any king any eight is now a straight it's not what I was hoping for I check uh, he mercifully checks behind um, and he has. A set of nines. He fought middle set and let you hang yourself. In a sense, but he maybe just gets all the money on the flop. I mean, he yeah. certainly gets a lot more, right? So we start. I mean, he does know you have the per, per the absolute best hand you Ooh. could have for him. Absolutely right. Other than two nines or two, th uh, two right? Or sorry, two rather threes. than two threes. Yeah, I, exactly. He's a. It's that's that's a very good point. But I have, could also have combo draws, and so um, I I kind of feel like he probably. Should he should I mean honestly I think if he's going to just call in the flop I think he should sh shove all in on the turn I think there's not too much worry that I have tens queens or king jack um, given the way that I've played I mean you'd game. have to have king jack of diamonds you would have had to flop. Uh, two overs, a gutter, and a flush draw, really, to be ha to have king jack. Right? Yeah, and then like the the kind of thing is, if I have tens, well, you're just supposed to go broke there. Yeah. Um, if I have queens, it's kind of a bad beat, Same but it's beat. kind of weird for me to have queens when I just flat out the big line. Not to say people. You can have jack there. eight. Uh yes, I could have. I could have jack eight. Queens so gross a in the turn, draw, yeah. but I, I still feel like. You know, it's a re-entry tournament too. Don't forget. It's a, so right. presumably, it's also a re-entry tournament for him as well. Uh, you know, but I, I just kind of thought that he probably should have gotten a bunch more money out of me. Um, so I was happy. I was knocked down to about twenty-four thousand after this. I basically lost half my stack. Okay. Okay. So uh, the next hand, um, I'm not really a, a featured player in this, but I threw it in there because I wanted to illustrate another concept. Okay. So it's folded around to me on the button. I have the Ace Five of Clubs, so obviously I'm going to make a raise. Uh, the blinds are still 25500 I make raise to... Tw uh, is that right? No. The blinds are... Yeah, 25500 I make it 1250. 1250. Um, the small blind calls and the big blind calls. Uh, the big blind is our, our villain, actually, from the previous hand. Okay. The flop comes down king, queen, nine with two spades. King of spades, queen of hearts, nine of spades. Uh, the Again, you have the ace five of clubs. I have ace five of clubs. I've airballed this pretty yeah. hard. Uh, I have no intention of really putting any money into the flop. I don't, I wasn't even going to see bet this. But the small blind checks and the uh, the big blind bets out. So he bets out about a half pot. Uh, I obviously fold, and the small blind calls. So now it's heads up between the two blinds. The turn is a seven of spades, bringing in a third spade. Uh, so king queen nine seven, and it goes check check. 
the river now is the ten of clubs. And so the final board is now king, queen, nine, seven, ten. One card straight, yeah, jack, any spades. Jack, yeah, any jack is a, is a spade. And it goes check, check. And the uh, small blind wins with, with king, ten. He flopped top pair and it got shot. And he just ended up making two pair that he didn't really want to make. Okay. So he played the hand pretty standard. Um, I feel like the other guy in the hand, so he ends up just checking back the ace of hearts and the three of spades. So I think this is like a terrible Ooh, bet on the wow. flop. That's, so that see yeah so he's got ace three, he leads into that flop when that smashes your range the small blinds range exactly and he's got the ace high. No. This is really just a bet that it's goes terrible, nowhere. Terrible, yeah. It's I mean sometimes you get away with it because the other two guys have pocket have fours seven, and pocket eight, threes seven, eight, or, yeah. or yeah like you're six, gonna win seven sometimes but a lot of times you're this is this down. is a losing bet and you don't want to make this bet and then when the river comes out well now you have no equity so you should probably bluff at it because. Anything like everything made it. Like anything that you conceivably could have bet on the flop should have. S you you are at the so stone bottom of your range. I would argue though that the guy's got a lot of hands he's going to fold. But when the river comes, the small blind is going to ha have a bunch of hands that he's going to fold for a bet. I think. This, when the small blind. When the small blind checks the river, yeah. he goes checks checks turn checks river. Yeah, I think he's going to have a lot of hands where if, if the ace high guy in the big blind bets the river, I think he's going to win the pot. Oh, I 100% agree with a, you. A and large that's amount that's of the time. point I'm making. Yeah, yeah, and so you yeah you have to bet here. You're at pretty much the stone bottom of your range for anything you should have bet here. Other than, I mean, I can't even think of a hand to be perfectly honest where that that is worse than ace high. I mean, we're we're both saying that he shouldn't bet ace high in the flop anyway, but there's there's nothing here that you know, you you should absolutely bet. You're at the stone bottom of your range. I think that's a big mistake. Um what size do you, would you be after there? Um what? on a board like this I would probably bet fairly large actually because I mean, it's it's kind of hard because you've given up representing the flush by the Check fact that you've checked the turn. But, I mean, yeah, I mean, I guess yeah, maybe I shouldn't bet that big because you're basically just representing a jack at this point. So you don't want, you want to make a bet that's consistent with that. Um, so enough about criticizing other people's play. Let's criticize yours. Yeah, so I thought this was an interesting one. Um, this is uh, slightly in the turn later in the tournament, so we're 300, 600. I think I'm still... Uh, I think I'm still uh, about a half a stack, but it's it's not it doesn't come into play too much here. I raise from middle position with the Ace of Hearts, Jack of Clubs. I make it 1350 at uh, 300, 600. Uh, it is called twice. It's called behind me by that same uh, dude. Yeah, by, by the same two. Actually, it's called it's called three way. So it's called uh, two seats over to me, and then on the button again, and then in the big blind. So we are four handed. Excuse me, four handed to the flop. Uh, we've got about. 4,500 or so in there. The flop comes down, ace of spades, king of hearts, three of clubs. So I've got top pair with a jack kicker. It's checked to me. I bet very small. I bet about almost exactly one third of the pot. Um, my same villain immediately behind me calls. I think he's in like the cutoff seat. Uh, so the, let's talk about yeah. the bet sizing there sure. uh, on the flop. You're four-handed to the flop. Um, it's a pretty dry flop, ace kick, Absolutely. three rainbow. You've got top pair, jack kicker. Uh, four ways. So, uh, what's your thought process going into your bet sizing there? It's mostly that that it's a dry flop multi way. I mean, I'm not real. Basically, the only thing I'm worried about is threes and ace three at the, at this ace point. Ace queen maybe. Yeah, and in certain, but ace queen, I'm just gonna kind of have to lose money to it. Right. You know, that that's kind of thing. And then, so that's another reason for not bloating the pot too. I don't have a very good hand. Right. But I would I would still also do this if I had like ace king or some really strong hand. So okay. I, you know, I, you're I balanced. Think, you feel yeah, you're balanced. I, I exactly. I, I feel it balanced. Okay. Um, so I'm called by two players. So I'm called by the player who one of the players is in position on me, and I'm also called by the blind who had called pre flop. So we're three ways to the turn, which is the ten of hearts, which is not a good card for me. So the you board have a is jack blocker, but it's a bad card, sure. Yeah, it's a so the board is now ace king three ten. Uh, brings a hard draw. It it brings it brings a hard draw. It makes all kinds of different two pair hands, and yep. of course, obviously, queen jack could have peeled. Even even if some even you know. There's king ten, ace ten are absolutely in the range. In the the, king in the king, range, king yeah. ten and ace ten are absolutely in the range too. Um, the small blind check or the big blind checks rather. I check and the player behind me checks. So I figure, well, probably not up against. So them. I'm wondering if there, you, you certainly could have been caught, and then it's not a great card. But I'm wondering mm -hmm. if you can bet fold that that turn, yeah, given that maybe. a heart. I know you've got uh, you've got a heart, but. Um, 
I feel like that might be a, a spot to just bet fold. Sure, and I think that people will almost never bluff raise here, so it's I think that's it's a, a tough spot to bluff. So raise. that's a pretty reasonable. I just I was a bit worried about I guess inflating the size of the pot. Yeah. Uh, given that my hand is not very strong anymore, sort of weakish it's, it's, one pair. It's hand. got devalued at this point. Okay. Uh, but but I think that is a a very valuable point. Um, so that that's definitely worth thinking about, and it's definitely an option to think about. Um, not generally the way I play. The river is a seven of hearts, which brings in the back door hearts. The final board is ace king three ten seven with three hearts on it, and uh, the the big blind bets fairly large. Uh, so I think we've got about like ten eleven thousand in there, and he bets ninety six hundred, uh, maybe more than that. Maybe he bets about two thirds pot, or maybe even three quarters of the pot. Uh, super, super polarized bet. It's really weird. It's a really weird bet, given that backdoor hearts made it goes check check on the turn. You've got the ace of hearts yep. in your hand, so yep. I think this is air a lot of the time. Really, I feel I'm I I don't I mean I don't have any history with these guys. I don't know, but I just that bet smells funny to me. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, I actually thought his range was pretty strong. Like I thought he could have a lot of stuff here. Was once I check behind. On the turn, I mean, I don't know that I, I don't know that he's up against flushes very often. That and so I think he feels like he can just kind of value bet a lot of two pair hands, and he can also, uh, he can also have been going for a check raise on the turn with the nut straight, which he had missed, but now is 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 that so? I I feel like he can actually have ace ten, ace seven, king ten, maybe maybe not king ten, uh, and queen jack a lot. So I just sort of thought about it, and I just I I sort of thought, okay, okay. Well, uh, here's here's the best way to think about this. So you think that this is air a lot? What what air is it? Like what's the specific hands? Because don't forget, this guy called queen ten behind a better and a caller, right? Yeah. So on the flop, the action went. I bet. One guy called, one guy folded, and he closed the action and called. So what's the kind of air? What what air does he have? Queen ten, ace four, that kind of thing. Well, that's not air though, right? If you, I think if you have ace four, you're just hoping you win a showdown. Yeah, or turn your hand into a bluff. Right. I think the hands that get turned into a bluff specifically are like jack ten and queen ten. Um, yeah, you're right. And maybe, that's, maybe there isn't. And that's it. Yeah, that's a good point. And I think in practice, a lot of people don't bluff enough. This doesn't smell bonus. right. It's just a weird bet. Yeah, it's I mean, a big bet on the river where he doesn't have the nuts, and he's betting into uh, when it goes check check a free card that rolled off. Yeah, that that produced something. Yeah, yeah, weird. It's just. I a weird decided bet. to fold, so uh, we'll never know what we'll he has if. Uh, if if Kaiser MM listens to the podcast, it's a good point that he doesn't. What hand does? What air does he have? It's yeah. really just Jack Ten and Queen Ten, and those aren't even pure air. They're still third pair. I mean, yeah. not that that's ever going to be really good. And and in a game theory sense, I think you absolutely have to bluff some of your Queen Ten and uh, and Jack Ten there. Sure. But in a practical sense, I don't know that people actually bluff that often there. So that's why I decided to fold. Okay. All right, last hand and. Uh, We'll get back to our, 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 our we'll get into our mailbag. Um, this was a this was a hand that I, I agonized for quite a while about. Uh, this is later in the tournament. This is uh, my second bullet of the tournament, and um, you know I at this point I have it's my second bullet, but I have pretty close to a starting stack of uh, of fifty thousand. Um, trying to infer what the blinds are over here based on my own notes. I think it's one of these weird levels where it's like 800, 1600, or 850, 1700, or something like that. Okay. But, uh, so I've got 50,000 It's inches. like 2.5x you're opening, probably. Yeah, sure. I'm, I'm, I'm opening about 2.5x. I make it about 4,000 uh, from under the gun with the 9-7 of hearts. I think we're eight-handed at this point. You have 9-7 um, hearts. 9-7 of hearts, so it's, it's a marginal open, but we've got antis in play at this point, which I think is I think is relevant. Okay. Um, it's called by two off the button as well as the small blind and the big blind, and I have no information on anybody because I think I just got moved to this table. I think this might even af actually have been right after my table of death uh, broke. Uh, so we're four ways to the flop, and it comes down nine of spades, five of diamonds, four of diamonds. So I flop top pair with a second kick, seven kicker, and uh, running was, straight draws. Running straight draws, but no but running uh, flush draws. Uh, the small blind leads out. Um, th so the small blind, actually, I, I think I had played with him at this point, or maybe I'm just uh, inferring things from later <laughs> in the tournament. But I seem to remember he he played quite loose. And yeah, I think I didn't know that at this point, that I think he played quite loose, uh, but I hadn't seen him get out of line. So small blind leads out on a 9-5-4 flop. The big blind folds, 
and uh, I decide to call from my early position, and the other guy folds. So we are heads up. Um, the pot is now maybe about, hmm, I'm trying to say, so 16,000, about 30,000 in the pot right now. Um, the turn is the five of spades. Uh, and so going back, there's yep. uh, flatting is probably I, I don't see any. Obviously, not going to fold. Right. Um, raising seems really thin. Ra raising just seems bad, um, to yeah. be quite frank about it, because raising just represents an overpair, and that means I'm overrepping my hand. And yet at the same time, he can't fold anything. That he can't fold anything that is that has is has enough uh, equity against that. Uh, against exactly that right. He like so. I'm just I'm just over representing my hand. My best case scenario, he's got like a flush draw and an overcard, and right. he's like forty five percent or something like that. And and that's the best case scenario. The worst case scenario is I'm just getting in my stack as like a nine to one dog or something like okay, that. Okay, so nine five again. Then flop nine five four five four diamonds. You have the seven nine of hearts. Right. That call. Yep, about, uh, it goes bet uh, four ways, and then I'm the only caller. Uh, the turn is a five of spades. Okay, There's so the board. Yep, so relevant right now, the stack size is about 30,000, and he has me covered, and I have about 37,000. Uh, he decides to check, and I decide to check behind. Now, pot control. Yeah. You don't want to get raised off your Exactly. So yeah. so this is, this is, you know, we talked about a previous bet fold spot before. This is a much more dangerous bet fold spot. Because, like, let's say that I decide to bet twelve thousand or something he like that. He can easily shove on. He you. can shove a straight draw or a flush draw on me, yeah. and I'm just sitting here going, like, Go man, am fold. I am I against a full house or am I against a draw? This is awful. So I decide to check it back. I'm in position two, which is obviously super helpful. The river's the eight of hearts, and he just uh, he jams. He puts me in for my I think my effective thirty seven thousand. I still have top pair. No kicker uh, in a You're pot. You're bluff that catching. I said, I, I'm absolutely bluff catching, and I'm not getting very good odds to do it. <laughs> hey, Schwartz, <laughs> what is your play? Snap fold. You snap fold? Yeah, I'm snap folding there. I know he's, first of all, he's massively overbetting the pot. Yes, uh, it, it looks bluffy, but it's also guys going for, uh, because when you check back on the turn, you clearly have some equity. He knows that you clearly have some equity. Maybe it's an overpair, right. a hand like that. Yep. And if he super shoves the river, he can maybe go to some, calling some guy who's making a big mistake into calling in that spot with the four or five, maybe flop bottom two filled up on the turn, that kind of thing, where he's going to get some guy who gets stubborn with two queens and pay off. Uh, yeah, it could be air a bunch of the time too. I get it, but I'm folding in that spot. Yeah, I, I did fold. Um, wasn't really sure about it. Ended up asking JC. I figure I go to, yeah. to my, my sure. no limit hold in front, take advantage of, of the guy who's got 20% and is, has an interest in me playing well. Uh, and and he says he says he probably calls, but it's not an easy call. Wow. Uh, the reason why he probably calls, so he's got a few reasons. Um, first of all, we got a seven blocker. I think that's relevant. Yeah. Um, so we, we do we do block a straight, which is, I think, one of his... A, b a big part of his value range for sure um and um, you know he doesn't have a ton of value hands i think uh pocket fours is a big value hand like pocket fives is quads there's only one combination of that and i block the nine right so i block top set as well uh two pairs you know isn't that likely from the small blind be you know you know, it's like so. So he could have four five. So four five, I think four five, four four, and seven six are a lot of his hands, and we're blocking some of those uh, to some extent. So you know, he was sort of leaning towards a call. Um, I was also thinking that my range is very capped after checking behind on yep. the turn, which is just something that you just mentioned pretty much by just saying like he knows I have something, but he knows I'm not in love with it too. Right. Um, so that that's you know the kind of thing because I mean I, I I guess I could have like queen ten of diamonds or something and not want to raise on the flop too. Uh, but you know so but but the point is even if he does that, there's no point in not value betting the exactly. value betting the river. And then but he says you know there's a counterpoint to comment calling. It's I'm close to kind of the bottom of my bluff catching range the, it's hard to, for me to actually have worse and have gotten to this position without having like a flush draw um so you know that's sort of interesting so i thought that was a a, a good analysis uh for both you guys and and you both you guys both said different very different things you came up with different responses i was sort of leaning towards the side of fold and then maybe he, jc convinced me a little bit but that <laughs> yeah there's there's not a lot of things you can have i'm basically worried about four or five uh ace five I mean, I mean, I don't know if Ace Five. Uh, I don't know if Ace Five just donk bets the flop like that. I mean, he shouldn't. 
It, well, I don't know why he shouldn't. I mean, he can get you to fold a bunch of hands. That, that if if we were heads up, I think that's different. But he's leading. In that's the three true. Guys. He's, yeah, he's yeah. donk betting in three guys. Forgot about that. Yeah. So what you you have to consider that when he donk bets in the three guys, he's he's got a strong hand or a strong draw. I think most of the time. Um. So yeah. I mean, I thought that was an interesting hand. It is. A tough spot. So I'll try to uh, throw those up and I'll, I'll anonymize them, as Party Poker has done, <laughs> and throw them up in the forum so that uh, if you want to follow along, you can do that. Yeah, indeed. Uh, all right, let's get on to some 140 or less. It's 140 characters. That's it. I love hashtags. I love all of them. Terrence Chan. He needs more than 140 characters to express himself. 140 or less. Uh, Roscoe, do you want to read uh, any of this? Sure. You put about you put a couple in here. Why don't you uh, why don't you go for one? So a guy named Daniel on Twitter. So his his Twitter handle is Daniel. <laughs> Lem- Lemish thirty two. Lemish thirty two. <laughs> he uh, he posted some hand. I assume this is from a W Coop uh, eight game. So this is what I mentioned earlier in the broadcast, uh, and I, I started butching it. So so Ross comes to my rescue and uh. finds the tweet uh, as mentioned. He screen caps. Yeah. The tweet. So, uh, so why don't why this don't is the table talk? Yeah. yeah. So it says. Uh, so why don't why don't why don't, why don't we do it this way? Uh, why don't we why don't we do some method acting? Okay. Um, maybe maybe Ross, you'd like to play the role of, of Phil Galfond, and I will play the role of uh, CG eighty seven. Okay. All right. Chris George. Yeah, Chris George. Um, so uh, uh, it's a triple draw hand. So you can see from the dealer chat that uh, that Galfon has made a seven six four three two, the number two, um, and that CG is obviously the loser of this hand. Paid him off. And so I as CG say, sigh. Where's my six one time? Don't use your one time on something that already happened. <laughs> you save it for the next hand. Okay, will do. Tips like this and more at runitonce.com. <laughs> LOL. Uh, and then the, the excellent caption from uh, Daniel, who is his Lamish, Lamish, Lamish32, uh, at Phil, Grand, Phil Galfon is always hashtag on brand, hashtag run it one time. That's good. <laughs> nice. Uh, Kate Hall, at Kate Hall, every year on the main event broadcast, quote, women are only 4% of the field. Why not more? It's a mystery. We've tried literally nothing to do <laughs> to attract them, yes. uh, which is fine. I mean, have they done literally nothing? I mean, what do we need to do to attract women? I guess. I mean, uh, there's. I guess. I mean, I. You know, Kate is obviously very vociferous and strongly opinioned on on this, and you know, I think Kate rails against a lot of the the sort of. Uh, relic misogyny, maybe you would call it. Well, of, that you know, absolutely like royal flush girls and, and sure. things like that. But but I, I feel like women are are featured on main event coverage. Yep. Um, I mean, certainly if women are four percent of the field, they certainly get from way more than four percent of the the airtime. Yep. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there's there's certainly a case to be said that the environment in poker rooms is not well attractive to them. But yep. I I mean, I certainly don't think it's ESPN's fault. That and I don't know what we can do about that. Yeah. I, I seem to also remember it used to be six percent of the field. So yeah. that's that if if if, I, if my memory is correct and it went from six to four, that's certainly not a great sign. It could be like France where you could just make people wear uh suits every time they come into a casino. So they're not all smelly sitting there and like you people, know, people don't track smell pants. bad in wear suits. <laughs> that's true. And he, he says French the, people specifically. He says to the guy who's who's you're, you're in the house of a man wearing sweatpants right now. You know, that's I find that. Oh, I'm a, like, hey, don't talk to me. <laughs> I'm sweatpants. I finally got jeans on this. Yeah, I'm impressed. You dressed up for the poker cast uh, 431. Um, but yeah, I thought that was uh, that was a good one too. Uh, you want to do Sean Deeps? Sure. Yeah, I, I just thought this was a different take. He said, finally watching the World Series of Poker episode. The fact that anyone is defending Kusev shows how bad the future of poker looks. So this is an interesting tweet because this came after this week's coverage. And I watched this week's coverage. I know, Terrence, you didn't get to it, Ross. I think you watched part of it. Um, there got to be some stalling with Kusef where he would raise, somebody would three-bet him or shove, and he'd have, like, the 8-6 off, and he'd do his song and dance and sit there and waste right. time when it's a snap fold. We know he's folding. That's that terrible. Stu- that stuff That's pisses terrible. me off. I can't stand that. And I wish, you know... I wish we had him on this week to take him to task for that. Like just fold. If, if we'd been able to get him. No, yeah, choice, because we, yeah. we didn't see it. But, uh, uh, of course, because we had him on last week. But um, he, I don't know why. He's, he's trying to gain some infinitesimal a little amount of EV by making Needling it seem people, like he has yeah. a tough fold when he doesn't right. have a tough fold. Right. Oh, I'm making all these big folds. 
dude, they know you're not making. You're talking about Tony Gregg. Like, he knows you're not it's making silly. all these top folds. <laughs> yeah. So just turn around, snap fold. That's it. I, I love it when I when like a guy makes a huge bet and like I think for a really long time and then I say raise it and the guy just like fires his hand into the muck. Yeah. He's like, okay, okay, I fine, caught. no yeah. problem. Yeah. And that and, and I think that's what Sean was referring to in this tweet. Uh, I hope. I mean, I don't know. Maybe he feels Maybe. like uh, the talk is over the top and he shouldn't be able to do well, that. Well, this tweet is from five days ago. So that that episode airs yet? Uh, I, I, I think I think I he must not. be referring to the previous episode. Because Sorry, this, this I missed the is, date on that. This, this tweet is five days old. So he's, he's clearly okay, talking so about he's his clearly interaction about that, with, yeah. uh, with uh, Stacey Madison. Okay. So that, that I don't, yeah, we should probably talk to Sean, maybe have him on the show one time to talk about this kind of stuff. But sure. um, uh, as far as this week's going, I, I just wanted to point out that yeah, pe- yeah, yeah. people Fair who enough. are upset with, with Kusev this week, I get it because yeah. that, that tanking stuff is crap. I can't stand it. Yeah. It, it, it's painful Tanking when you don't when you don't have painful. a decision is, is awful. Yeah. So, and, and Lon and Norm were giving it to him too on the coverage, which was good. Uh, all right, uh, Jerry Spratt. <laughs> this is a non-poker okay, so tweet. Th- <laughs> so this is, if we're going to get to the point where you guys are going to talk about Trump and Hilton, I'm just going to uh, Trump no, no, and Clinton. No, no, I'm just going to I'm I'm take the headset off. I'm going to have myself a root beer and uh, <laughs> and go. This is a no politics I'll wait, zone. I'll, I'll wait till you come back. <laughs> we go past the no spins. <laughs> okay, zone. Okay, well, this is uh, uh, this is the one good tweet that uh, all right. from a poker player. Donald Trump is the guy. Or it's mis- at Mr. Underscore Victor. Donald Trump is the guy who is 100% certain he anteed when the entire table knows he didn't. <laughs> it's good. I like it. It's true. Uh, all right, uh, let's move on. Terrence, you can come back to the show now. The politics is over. All right, that uh, was uh, that was shorter than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, I thought you guys were going to go into this whole Vanessa Selp style Brunson interaction. That that's what we're doing right now. Oh, you're this is out. the poker gossip that we're getting into. The Twitter wars. Uh, this one was it's still Trump related. How is it still? Yeah, this is more about is uh, Vanessa and Doyle though. I, the, the reason I picked this one wasn't to do yeah, with Trump. Fair enough. Um, Doyle Brunson tweets, and again, I'm not going to be able to see it unless somebody else did. So <laughs> I'm thankful that somebody else uh, put this out. Uh, I'll bet a lot of money I can name and prove twice uh, as many lies Hillary has said, maybe ten times. Uh, Vanessa, she Vanessa Salbst replies. Uh, you're just like the rest of the ignorant masses, recycling talking points, making, assert- uh, making assertions, avoiding actual facts and logic. Doyle Brunson tweets back, Don't know if you follow me, but if you do, please unfollow me. You showed me your character when you welched on Jason. Hashtag tried to. Uh, by first, the way, Doyle all, using hashtags, but that's, that, that's what I got out of that one. Yeah, uh, Doyle, Doyle using tried to hashtag. But why? Do, and it's weird that he says when you welched on Jason hashtag tried to. What is it? Did she welch or did she try to? Those are two different things. Right. I agree. First of all, she, and, and anyway, so Vanessa she replies back. I haven't followed you for a long time, and yeah, paying a hundred thousand uh, dollars equals welching. Remember, she bought out and right. spent a hundred thousand buying out of this bet right um i hedging doubt, really hedging sorry yeah. and then she continues i doubt you want to start a debate about ethics in poker uh which is shots fired absolute <laughs> shots fired shots fired absolutely love that one that was great uh she yeah and then no response from from, from because he doesn't want to start a well, discussion about it there was another t- uh, i'm trying to find it here but somebody replied to doyle and he was like the brunsons are vile they want things to be the the way they used to be, and he said it just a bunch of mean stuff about Doyle. And Doyle just responded, "Fuck you, you fucking piece of shit." Did he really? Wow. <laughs> Any <laughs> hashtags? Doyle <laughs> tilted on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Any hashtag? I, I, you know, it's it's kind of like funny. Yeah, like I almost have to give it to Doyle for being like an eighty year old guy who's <laughs> he's who's on Twitter, like, who's on Twitter and like getting in, 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 in Twitter wars with people fights. and using hashtags. Like I, you, you almost have to give it to him for that. Like he. You know, we talk about his longevity in the game and how he like it's impressive that he's still competitive as his age against guys who are like thirty and thirty five and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm I'm actually perhaps more impressed that he can that he's basically like everybody else in the universe and can't get, resist getting drawn into a Twitter <laughs> war. <laughs> like, That's fantastic. Um, so I got one. This Go. one's this one's a bit of an old one. Uh, so it's I guess it's a cross between one four year lesson and in case you missed it. But uh, Kevin M thoughts. Pointed out, he's so uh, I guess Take he, a was, picture. he was at the Venetian. Uh, it seems that he was uh, strolling by or maybe playing at the roulette table. Uh, and he takes a picture, says, Sheldon needed an edge. A third zero on the wheel should help. At least no one is being taken advantage of online. And this is a picture of a roulette uh, table with a zero, a double zero, 
and a triple zero. <laughs> wow. Because Roulette just didn't have a big enough edge. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> shocking. A uh, bunch of retweets on that one. So, uh, I mean, yeah. so for as far as this goes, I'm all for, you know, I, I don't really have much. Yeah, it's, it's it. buyer beware. Yeah, like, exactly. it's a market. It was... Like it's But it's, you know, in the world of six to five blackjack and all this kind of stuff. And, and you know, the savvy players aren't going to put up with this shit. But, right. I mean, it's just, it's, it, it is amusing because anytime you can take a shot at Sheldon. Are there savvy roulette players? I don't know. I, th- you know, yeah, the MIT team. <laughs> Back when you could, you could time a wheel or something. Maybe, maybe they're still doing it. Who knows? Maybe <laughs> <They're> <laughs> it's all hush hush. I wonder if you could beat a triple zero roulette wheel if you can, if you, if you, uh, if you know the the way it spins. <laughs> Probably not. Uh, all right, let's hop into the mailbag. And now. That right there is the mail. Now let's talk about the mail. Can we talk about the mail, please, Mac? I'm dying to talk about the mail for you all day, okay? Mailbag. Email number one. Voicemail. Voicemail. Hey, this is Rob from St. Catharines, Ontario. 133,871,795 poker chips from Kells. Hey guys, call me and put you over. I love the show. Listen every week. It helps my grind to my midnight job. I love the new format. Ross, keep with the drops. Uh, I got one poker question. Now, um, <clears throat> I was looking into getting a book. It's The Course by Ed Miller. I don't know if you've read it in any of his material. Can I get your opinion on that? I'd be greatly appreciate it. And one quick poker hand question. Uh, Pocket Kings in the on the under the gun, race 25, it's 2 5 game. A solid player, race 65, loose cannon calls 65. I popped a 295, and they both fold. I, What would be a more sufficient bet instead of 295? I didn't, I didn't want to scare them off. Give me your thoughts on that. would be great. And I'm, I'm heading out to Montreal this weekend, heading to the playground. I'd like to get a couple, chip off a few uh, flakes of the uh, Poker Cast Karma for me. Thanks a lot. You guys have a good day. Love the show. We'll see you around. First of all, Adam, was that poker chip stacked side by side or like racked? Oh, so, yeah. Good yeah. question. So, diameter versus uh, thickness. thickness. Mm. Uh, I'll, I'll hit the Pocket King's hand first. Kay. I'm not familiar with the Ed Miller book, uh, but of course this is... Ed the Miller's book. fantastic. This is the 2 plus 2 poker cast. Ed, Ed has written books, for, yeah, uh, but, written books yep, for um, Roten. And he didn't wrote in any books. He, he, wrote, he wrote some books. He wrote some with his machete. <laughs> Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, but uh, no, but I, I agree. Ed Miller's. I, I really enjoyed Ed Miller's books when I was was when I was on the on the way up. Yep. Um, the Black King's hand. The most relevant detail that you, you missed is stack, stack sizes. Yeah. Exactly, you got it. I think, and I think uh, most people knew that. Uh, if they were if they're advanced listeners, um, yeah, stack size is really relevant. So, if your stack size here is six hundred, then two ninety five is way too large of a raise. Yep. You're you know you're basically telling them I have a big hand and you should only put I'm it in if you have aces. All my chips in. Yeah, you should only put your <laughs> chips in the pot if you have aces right now. Um, if your stack size is fourteen hundred, then I think your 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 sizing is cool. You fatso is pretty reasonable because uh, if you get one of the call if you get a caller, you know one caller, then you know you've got six fifty in the pot. You're you're getting close to the point where you can just you know make it a you know the the the, the pot ends on the flop basically you're going to put it in on any non Well you get flop. still have a 1000 left in a 600 pot. Yeah, I yeah, mean but you, maybe. Can bet, you you can bet you can bet 300 and then ship the rest in on the turn or you can 300 and get raised yep. or you can check uh like you know for example there's there's certain flops that you could check for sure so like very dry flops uh, you could check and let him lead out and then smash it all in then. I even feel like if you have a deep sack it's it's a bit too much anyway. I it I might be. Yeah. I, I think I'm like 225 245 to maybe too. Agreed. Live poker, you know, you and I don't play nearly, I think, as much live poker. I think there's always the willingness for people who re-raise to put more money into the pot. So as exploitively, I think it's it's it may be okay if you're if you're a little bit deeper. I mean, let's not forget there's a two five game and he opened for twenty five and got yeah. and got repop got called and repopped. Right. So this isn't the online game that I think we're used to. Um so Okay, uh, Rob, slay him in Montreal. Uh, yeah. Hope, uh, hope for some yeah, poker I hear nothing but great things about the, the playground. The playground supposed so, to be great. Yeah. So I should, we should get out there. Good one luck. Day. Email number two. 
Hey guys, this is Robert calling back from Mount Pleasant, Michigan to defend myself on <laughs> parents calling me out about the distance to Kells and dollar bill thicknesses. <laughs> Thought I'd walk you through the math. So according to <laughs> Google Maps, I am 3,473 miles from Kells. There are 5,280 feet in a mile and 12 inches per foot. Therefore, there are 217,768,320 inches to Kells. It's all this imperial The thickness stuff. of a dollar bill is 43 thousandths of an inch. So it takes $232.5581 to make an inch. <laughs> so 217,768,320 times 232.5581 equals 50,643,795,343.8 dollar bill thicknesses U.S. to Kells from Mount Pleasant. Keep up the good work. Thanks. Bye. He showed you. Plus a constant. Plus a con <laughs> Where's the rim shot? <laughs> we need a rim shot. <laughs> Hi-yo. I'll fix it later. Yeah. <laughs> go maybe, maybe not. Just go to number three. We can, we, that one stands alone. We don't even need to comment on it. Email number three. Uh, Troy from Houston writes, uh, I love the conversation from last week's show and had to chime in on the ruling made on the recent event, main event coverage. Uh, this ruling solidified my position that tournaments are moving closer and closer to online games that have no personality anymore. Uh, they say they don't want headphones and hoodies and then prevent any type of meaningful needling and verbal jousting. Uh, Terrence stated a rule that said, to paraphrase, players were forbidden from giving advice or criticizing that could influence play. Give me a friggin' break. How far can they take this? Aren't players trying to advise and influence play when they grab chips and say, be careful as you're ca uh, counting out contemplating a bet? Obviously, they're trying to goad you into betting or not betting, right? Uh, wasn't Scotty Wynn influencing play when he said, if you call, it's going to be all over? Of course, it's supposed to be fun. I don't know why the World Series Poker just doesn't have a rule uh, that encompasses everything, which reads, rules will be determined by the floor as it sees fit, no questions asked. As a caveat, uh, as a, they basically do have that rule. So. Well, that was, yeah, that, <laughs> was, that was the rule, yeah. I mean, so, yeah. I mean why, I, why isn't, I guess the Troy's comment is, why isn't that the entire rule book? <laughs> it's it just in basically it. saying, like, because, you know, and, and, and I agree. 100% with everything that's being said. Yeah. We are, as poker players, constantly trying to influence play. We're, tr we're This is what we do. Like, we're, you know, for those who aren't GTO math robots anyway, like, we're always trying to influence the way people play, right? Like, giving off reverse tells is, yeah. is a way of influencing play, or giving off intentional Absolutely. tells. Like, you're, like you said, like, yeah, that's that's when a great example was given, like, when somebody reached for chips says, careful, or don't bet too much, or something like that. That's, that's all exactly what William was doing. That's in, that's what he's uh, being yeah, he's villainized for. he's doing it for. over the top. Yeah. He does it way more than anyone else does, but he's still doing what everybody else yeah. does. Yeah. Email number zero zero four. my jaws up on the low. Bravos one writes, and I'm I'm gonna read it the way it was written. Yeah. It goes, T Ross and Fucknut, or er, Adam. So Bravos and I are uh, internet buddies because we, uh, he's a Sharks fan, and he okay. posts in the uh, hockey thread that we all post in all of So <laughs> gotcha. we 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 have this uh, Can uh, Canucks Sharks rivalry going. He's just bitter because the Sharks are. Horrible, and, right. and when they finally do, they choke. And right. Well, blow, blow. I mean, and as Canucks fans, we just accept the fact that our team is horrible. Right. They think they're good. Yeah, they think they're good because every year they get cock teased <laughs> into thinking that like they're Charlie a good Brown team. and the and, and the football. Yeah, <laughs> and the, the football is simply the yeah. the semifinals or the the round of eight usually in the, the NHL Joe playoffs. Joe Thornton is Charlie Brown. Joe Thornton is Charlie Brown, uh, ex except with gold, more gold medals. <laughs> um, <laughs> Started this email approximately 70 kilometers from Kells uh, in Dublin and finished it 5,050 miles. Yes, miles, because America. Uh, came across this spot a few weeks ago and would like your input. 2040 Limit Hold'em. Barrier is fine. I'm going to have to dust my This is you, baby. Uh, it's folded to the cutoff who opens. I three bet on the button and the small blind and the cutoff call. I win the hand on the turn. The dealer, but the dealer moves the button one to my left and the players throw out their blinds. I pause for a second, then inform the dealer that I believe the button is incorrect and I should be the button. There's some discussion. So just to just to clarify, Bravos was the button. Right. Button moved, and he went, "Oh no, I'm the button ag again." In quotes, but he didn't realize what he was doing. Right. He got he got the button twice. So he thought he thought he was doing the right thing in correcting and correcting the wasn't. dealer, but was wrong, which <laughs> uh, happens a lot in poker. There's some discussion, and then I eventually asked the guy to my left, "You called my three bet in the big blind, right?" 
while he's recollecting, the guy who was actually the big blind, the hand before, says, yeah, that's right. The dealer moves the button to me and deals the cards. While the hand is playing out on the turn, the guy to my left donks out, which reminds me of the previous hand's flop action where he did the same, donking into me on the flop. Obviously, this would not be impossible if I was a small blind in the previous hand. I think about it for a second and then just decide to stay mum because I'm not even sure how anything could be done about it other than me not getting the button next time around, but that's never actually going to happen. Thoughts? Any of you say anything after talking to the dealer into giving you the button twice accidentally? So uh, let's talk about that. He's got yeah. some haikus, which are funny, but uh, <laughs> let's talk about that. I, I have had that happen to me a lot. Sure. I've thought I was right when I was wrong. And not a lot. It's happened a few times where uh-huh. I realized that I, I was wrong again. You corrected the dealer in your favor accidentally. <laughs> or even out of my favor. I mean, right. whatever. If I realized I made a mistake. But um, generally what I do, and that happened, you know, we've played a lot of live poker. So yep. um, I stopped doing it. I stopped yep. moving buttons. I stopped interjecting um, because I knew that you know sometimes i don't exactly remember or i remember something incorrectly so i just kind of let whatever happens happens and if i know i'm right and i'm getting screwed i'm going to say something but if i you know if i don't know 100 percent, i'm probably not yeah the the people at home listening to this can't see me nodding vociferously at you but yeah that's really the best thing to do is just to let the dealer run the game 98 percent of the time yeah and speak up when you're pretty sure that that something's wrong um but I mean, I guess that's 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 kind of what uh, what Bravos did, right? Like he thought something was wrong, yeah, and he, he was decided, sure. Yeah. He was pretty darn sure, and he decided to speak up. Now, once the action's on the turn, there's nothing that can be done about it. There's like once you've got a pot with action, there's nothing that can be done. I mean, if you really feel bad about it, you could just sit out your next button, and then the other guys wouldn't get screwed. I wouldn't worry about it. Like this is the kind of stuff where you didn't intend to angle shoot, like you didn't intend to do something wrong. If you feel so bad about it that you won't be able to sleep at night if you don't make it up in some way then maybe you, you do that but yeah i mean that's i wouldn't worry too much about it i mean but yeah most of the time it's probably better to just let the dealer do their job indeed shall we get to the haiku do the haikus, um, yeah. so we've <laughs> each got one should we each read our own haiku or i'll read yours you read mine what about ross's and ross uh, I'll read mine. ross can read his own okay all right <laughs> this is for the adam haiku adam invited to the savage invitational hustled hold by hole <laughs> so is that, is that true? That's not really true. No, I uh, well, I choke, I puke all over myself. That's definitely <laughs> from golf. But um, Gratz and Michael Gratz and I uh, gamble pretty good when we're when we're in these, these things. Players just uh, it's almost like they stand in line to give you the money here. <laughs> they is, that two, is that two thousand four, Adam? That's, yeah, that yeah. is two thousand four. Um, that's a new one. You've been you've been searching that, or I haven't heard that one in a while. Uh, I played it. Have you? Yeah, and he's just trying to brush up on his 2004 08 game. Most <laughs> of the most of the hustling happened on the putting green ah. at uh, the Savage Invitational, okay. so that's what I'll say. Uh, all right, Terrence is wrapped in gauze and tape. Attempted shot. What a sprawl! Hit him in the face. How perfect is it that that's hit really him good. in the face happens to be f- exactly five syllables? Five syllables. Well, what 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 dumb luck? MJ, the original haiku poetess. Yeah, didn't even know it. All right. Uh. Pot wrap and flush draw, bluffing total brick, bluffing total brick river, LOL rebuy. Is that four? LOL. Oh no, five. L-O-L rebuy. Rebuy. Yeah. Nice. Oh, uh, you fatso. Uh, finally, do you guys have a comparable comparable word to mileage? I mean, do your cars get good kilometerage up there? <laughs> uh, cheers, boys. So, uh, no, we say mileage. Well, I think we say fuel economy. But oh, we say fuel economy, yeah. Fuel economy. yeah. I guess we don't really say mileage, do we? One thing that I've that. noticed, or I think somebody said it on a podcast. Um, Good on gas, I think is the... Yeah. I think is what I hear. Americans measure things by miles, they'll say, or a couple blocks. And <laughs> Canadians seem to measure things by time. Be like, True enough. That's that's like, it's 10 minutes oh, walking that way. It's 15 minutes I never driving even of that, that way. Yeah, but I always, I was, I was, yeah, it's usually time. Yeah. All right, uh, this is me. This is me, right? Uh, Matt from London writes... Email number <laughs> six. First, first time here? Matt from London writes... <laughs> 650 miles from Kells. Hey, guys, love the show. Just had a little realization I thought you'd like. I've been possessed by Ross's drops. The other day, someone described a football player in a game and a uh, football player in a game I was watching as a legitimate threat in the run game. And I heard Ross's legit drop. Uh, legit. Now today, I'm at a family event, and my wife's holding a friend's kid. I hear, you're in trouble. 
Thanks for getting inside my head, Ross. Uh, now, what's the line on how many times I hear about having a kid in the next couple of days? Cheers. Uh, yeah, I mean... You're in trouble! I don't think you want uh, those ones in your head, but <laughs> you're certainly in trouble. Yeah, no question. Uh, been there, done that. Email number Zeben. Breno writes, I would love to get some advice from you. I'm an amateur player who's been playing regularly for about 10 years. I was recently in a $1,000 tournament with about 800 players. This is a very large tournament. I oh. wonder what one that was. We were two from the money with 100 players left and a payout of 1,500. Speaking of 1.5x uh, yep. main caches, I went all in in middle position with eight big blinds with two queens. After I went all in, somebody at another table busted, so we started hand for hand and we were officially on the money bubble. I was called by Ace King and lost. There's some debate among my poker peers about whether or not I should have just folded that close to the money. Can I get your thoughts? Would the answer be different if someone else had opened or if I had kings or aces? Thanks. So uh, do you want me to do this? Go for it. Brenna, get your money in. Yeah. Um, your EV is your EV. You don't. Uh, you have eight big blinds. You get two queens. You want to get the money in there. <laughs> two, two queens is a big blind. And, and if it, the kings or aces makes no difference. I, I mean, mean, you're you're actually, you know, you you're actually happy if you just steal a blind. So like early on in a tournament, you want some action with queens. Queens is a big hand. But here on the stone bubble, what you really just want is to shove your eight bl big blinds in, and nobody calls you. And and I think that's totally fine because even if somebody calls you with like ace ten, you're not super thrilled to be in the seventy thirty spot. I'm because, trying to yeah. Because you're in a money because you you are in a bubble situation. Um, but that being said, you can't just fold and you know. It, yeah, you could probably fold your way into the money and have like four big blinds left or something like that. I think it's probably probably best to get. But you're trying to win the tournament. You're not trying to min cash. Uh, well, I mean, I think that's an old way of thinking that isn't necessarily mathematically or I seem correct because I mean, if you're just trying to win the tournament, then like why don't you just shovel with like ace 9? No, I'm talking about this specific situation when you have eight big blinds. I I understand. Well, what I was saying well, if you're if if you're not in a bubble situation, and you have eight big blinds, and you have like ace nine or something like that, then you would shove, or like ace ten or like ace three suited. But this is not a shot bought the shove out with like ace three suited or oh, I see king jack suited. Well, but specifically this hand. Two queens, yeah. yeah Two this queens is what, is what I mean, yeah. So, so basically, like, the way that bubble play works is that, you know, you've got your jammer fold hands, and I don't remember exactly what eight big blinds in middle position is, but it's pretty loose. You're going to be shoving, I think, probably about like 25. 20, maybe not that many, 20, 20, low 20-ish 20 percent of your hands, right? So the best kind of 20 percent hands you're, that you can be dealt, you're going to be moving in with eight big blinds, especially if there's antis. Now, queens is happens to be the top, top one and range. a half yeah. percent of hands, and so you, you just kind of have to play the Craft point. a situation with queens that you would fold with eight big blinds on the, on the bubble. Oh, if you're on the stone bubble and two guys shove in front of you, I think you can fold queens. You can snap my queens. I mean, you're you're going to give up some equity in winning the tournament, which is what you're talking about. But the fact is that 1.5x buy-in is still real money. Um, so I think it's I think you should fold if like under the gun moves in and under the gun plus one calls over shows sure. or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah, definitely. Email number. Martin writes. Hey, Adam, Terrence, and Ross, love the show. Have been hooked since the first Gus Hansen interview way back. Think you should bring him back, maybe uh, to talk about his comeback to poker or some of the other stuff he's been doing, like playing bridge and Rackleton. Rackleton, game of tennis, table tennis, squash, and badminton combined. Wow, Rackleton sounds like a fun. That's game. called Rackleton. So uh, all the paddles. You got all the paddles. You got many paddles. <laughs> uh, I'd love to have Gus back on. That would be awesome. If anybody out there has any kind of contact info or uh, any friend does. of a friend of Gus. Anybody playing in Bobby's room listening to this podcast, just hand him your cell phone. Yeah. <laughs> 70s, he's 80s porn star Gus now. Yeah. Uh, I also need some poker cast karma this Sunday. My plan is to run the Berlin Marathon in under four hours, 30 minutes. Wow. Oh. Then fly back to Denmark, drive home, Jones. and late reg the Sunday million and play through the night. Nice. GTO. That's so hardcore. this was last Sunday, so we cannot uh, bestow upon him any poker cast karma. But I hope he, just by emailing into the show, he had some corresponding karma for his... Yeah, Berlin Marathon. I mean, you know, four thirty marathon, and you know, uh, a Sunday million a final day. table yeah. would be pretty impressive. Next time, leave a voicemail while you're running the marathon. Ooh, that would be good. Clever. <laughs> I like it. I don't think you should carry your phone when you're running. You know, <laughs> that's you. I'm not a marathon guy. Email number number nine number nine. Love Michael number says. Nine. Hey guys, love the show. I'm a listener from sometime early in the Rounders days. I think the transition from MJ as host and A. Schwartz to co-host to Adam as host with Terrence as co-host and Ross providing some color has been great. 
I love the non-poker banter and really oh. appreciate the fact that the show isn't as tournament-centric as it was, as I don't play them and I rarely follow anything other than the WSOP main event. How timely is this? Yeah, I was I'm glad one right person enjoys it. Exactly. <laughs> Brought you up one, <laughs> one guy doesn't think you suck. <laughs> there you go. Uh, he goes on. I normally listen from San Diego, and I don't know how many miles, San kilometers. No, it's San Diego. San Diego? Yeah, mm, that's how it's Diego. pronounced. It means whale's vagina. Yeah, it's Spanish. You know that. <laughs> anyway. Uh, how many miles, kilometers, dollar bill thicknesses, Barbie dolls, or footballs? That is from Kells. I don't give a fuck how far anything is from Kells, and the how far are you from Kells meme has to die, as that horse has Do been you think dead. I care? <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> so long, the flesh is falling off the bones from decomposition and the beating it still takes. This part of the email only got read because of the vivid. <laughs> this guy's furious. Vivid. This guy uh, took a communications he's course. He's tilted yeah, by the kills. I, I just, I mean, I love the writing. <laughs> At any rate, I've attached a picture, which makes fantastic radio, I'm well aware, of how far I currently am from Kells. Let's say about 10 feet, and he posts a picture of uh, a bar, uh, bar called, called Kells, Kells Irish Pub. Yeah. Bonus points if you know where this one is. It's reasonably close. Since you mentioned giving going to the city occasionally, there's a chance you've been Seattle. To. So you've got to be Seattle, Chicago, right? That's yeah. the one that we talk about a lot. So uh, he says, keep up the great work, Michael. Sorry, we're still going to keep talking about Kells. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm Googling. Seattle is my guess. I'm Googling. It's Portland. Oh, Portland. Yeah, yeah that's a good call. I think it's going to wrap it up for the uh, mailbag this week. We've got a couple more we'll get to next week or yeah. the later this Join week, Join us I on guess. the forums. Uh, we we got the forums. great. The William uh, Kasuf, uh, you know, Last couple a lot of shows of, did. Yeah, prompted a lot of discussion, and uh, yeah, both they're both <laughs> they're both William Kasuf shows. Yeah, that's true. It is the William Kasuf show. This uh, at least at he's this revived stage the, the world, forums single handed. Uh, the World Series of Poker. So come on in, uh, give your thoughts on the Motormouth uh, from from the UK. Uh, that are everybody's favorite Indeed. and least favorite lawyer. <laughs> uh, it was fun. Come talk about <laughs> anything else we talked about on the show this week. Love to have you. Uh, hit us up on Twitter. Uh, always happy to interact with y'all. What, uh, what's your schedule? Have you decided if you're going to uh, do this fight you've been offered, or is that something you want to talk about? I, I sort of decided that, you know, given the injury status I have right now, and I wouldn't really have enough time to train properly for a tough opponent. So uh, that's not going to happen. I am going on the road. Uh, next week I'll be somewhere in the I'll somewhere in the interior of British Columbia. We'll ah. be able to tell you where. So I might might miss one, or I might have to join you on the road for one. But uh, we'll, we'll keep in touch. Uh, but I've 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 promised I, I've promised the the young lady in the other room that I, I would do something non fight related for a short period. Of non poker time, so. and non fight related. Non poker non fight related. She's been taking care of me for a while, so uh, it's, it's her time, time 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 to do some fun. Nice. She, she will enjoy. It's a good time of year. There's uh, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> It's kind of the it's kind of the last uh, two competent weeks of the year. That was uh, my just, favorite drop of all time yeah. for timing right there. <laughs> That's good. Uh, all right, thanks to uh, everybody who listened, tuned into yeah. our show. Thanks to Robin for putting us putting up with the, uh, the everybody invading their her place again. Uh, yeah, you at least you took your Roscoe. shoes off eventually. I took my <laughs> shoes off this week. It's uh, it's a big plus. Uh, and to you for listening again. So uh, we will talk to you next week. Bye.